yeah. right here since uh, since we've been here. I think we've only done like one show since Mania, something like that. <laughs> Since, well, since no. after Mania, we went to uh, according to the archive, which I set up every after I put the date as the file name, right? And the most uh, the the file name that I had to change was April fourteenth, right? And right, right, right. I don't think we did one that. Well, maybe we did. April that, was, that would be the last one. Okay. April fourteenth would have been the uh, the last show that we did because we went to uh, we went to Monday Night Raw. Which was, that was April twentieth, four twenty, right? Yeah. Four twenty. Um, and we then haven't been on the air since then. I know that we were going to do a show the following night and yeah. got caught up with a bunch of things. And yeah. then last, well, we week, were obviously a, a day behind because yeah. Right, last week we had King of the Ring, and then this week, right now, on ESPN, yeah. uh, eight o'clock Eastern time, and they're doing a. Day. I wanted to see that too. <clears throat> The only thing that about me it. off a little bit, I'm sorry, was last night on Raw, Xavier Woods said in the backstage segment, my documentary. And in all the trailers I've seen, he's like seems to be the featured guy. Yeah, right. I thought it was a documentary about the whole developmental system. Is it a documentary on one guy's journey through developmental? No, uh, no, 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 no. The, the whole thing. It's NXT. It's behind the curtain okay. NXT. Okay. So they go from the trailer that I saw. It's Triple H, and he's before the entire NXT roster, and they basically go behind the scenes oh, and so and tell you. You know what goes on backstage at NXT with backstage meetings, uh, production, everything that goes into producing a show, all of that stuff. They're going to show you tonight on ESPN. It's behind the curtain WWE special. What is the problem? I will own the fact that I've gained a lot of weight. You're right. I'll, I'll own the fact that even though I'm not as white as I look here, I'm not that tan. But I'm nowhere near this white, by the way. But there's a whole bunch of bald jokes in the chat room. Can you vouch for me how much hair was on the bathroom? About an hour ago, when your sister cut You're my, it was from bald. You've got it was an inches up there. It was an insane amount of hair that I had on my head this morning. If, and if, I cut it all off, and for some reason, when I spike it like this and push it back down, I can even see it in the mirror. It looks like I've got like extremely thin hair. Right, right, right. right. I've got the thickest fucking hair you've ever he's, seen in your he's life. He's got a good you inch and stuff a half a pillow with what he's I He's got a good inch and a half, two inches <clears> on there. Now, if you want to see, why it does if you want to see bald yeah. and balding. As in, like, I've got the thing where it goes down there. Here, I'll, I'll give you... There's a receding you can't, hairline. You can't see yeah. my... But I've got the receding hairline. That's, that, that's on camera. You can see that. That right yeah. there. That is what they think I have, only with, like... That's meat. bald. It looks like a, they think I've got the same thing, only I'm trying to grow it out still. Right, right, I've right. I've got a full head of hair. I don't know why it does that. But no. whatever. Anyways. You've got, you've got a lot of hair still. Me? Yeah. I take I take the the thing and just... Wah, wah, wah. Yeah. It's gone. You know, I take it right off. But anyway, uh, so we're back here first time in two weeks, three weeks, uh, if you count this week. But we're back this week. So uh, we got a lot to talk about. Um, there hasn't been that much breaking news. I could have sworn somebody was released. I know that there were NXT talents. There were five of them yeah. that were released. Well, there, it ended up being six, but yeah. Somebody was on WWE. I can't remember. There's been a lot of injuries. Alex Riley undergoing surgery this week. NXT guy who was being pushed as of late. Uh, Vern Gagne passed away. Sami Zayn last night on Raw injury. with uh, an injury. That was kind of weird the way that happened. With, pre -match uh, yeah, yeah, pre match coming to the ring. I think he got too excited, man. It was his Raw debut. And he threw his shoulder out or something trying to get the, you know? the crowd to cheer him on or something. I think it was his shoulder, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But uh, I got confused so, with uh, Pacquiao. You heard that story, right? He fought with Pacquiao a, Mayweather. Well, no, he fought with a torn yeah, rotator had, cuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's gonna be out. They're saying upwards of nine months. Did, man, did you hear the new prediction for the pay per view? Uh, for the buy rate? No, I did a Google search today to see if I could find any estimate, um, and I could not really. Are you serious? They're saying four million or higher. Are you serious? That's the new prediction. Wow. Like, or the estimate, I should say. They're, you they're know guessing what it would be at least four, four million, maybe more. You know what I thought? It felt I like mean, the Super Bowl this past Saturday night. I mean, anywhere. I'm talking people on Facebook, girls, even wrestling older people. Air, even boxing fans. Even fans that are not fans of boxing yeah. were on Facebook That's saying, my point. where, where are you yeah. watching the fight tonight? I, girls that going. probably couldn't name one boxer. Right, or, right. Other than them two in the last 20 years. But they were on there. Talking about it before the fight, during the fight, days right. after the fight. Like, this was a sports happening. Where did and you it was four million? Uh, I was listening to Meltzer this morning, and he wow. said that the new estimate is four million. Well, Actually, no, it was also on uh, ESPN. I was watching ESPN somewhere today, and they said it on there, too. What I said to you is, all right, I can understand. They were expecting... 
for those unaware, the all-time pay-per-view buy rate record, all-time, was Floyd Mayweather and Oscar De La Hoya. That was that's the very the, first ever 24-7 the they did. All-time, okay. That was the first time they did that, all and it time, worked so good. All-time pay-per-view buy rate record, $2.48 million That's for the fight Oscar. that made Mayweather a draw. Right. Before that fight, he had never drawn any, anything on pay-per-view. Right. But $2.48 million was the all-time pay-per-view, nobody's ever beat that, Oscar De La Hoya and Floyd Mayweather. Um... Going into this fight, Mayweather and uh, Pacquiao, they had predicted three million, somewhere around three. Now you're saying and maybe most predictions I heard before the fight were high twos, low threes. Right, right. And now that the fight's over and a couple of days have gone by, the the word I'm hearing, not nobody told me directly, just people I've heard talking on shows and stuff, right, have said four million is the new uh, the low ball, no, not I the low like, ball estimate, but they think that's you know, about where it's going to land. As as we got closer to the fight, I was all about three million buys, somewhere around three million buys, yeah. and then as we got closer to the fight. The more and more people I saw talking about it, it was almost like people were throwing because it was a hundred dollars. I know it was ninety dollars, and, and then it's it, and then too. well, ticket price. Well, yeah. that's that's the other thing. No comps. Is the casual fan, the casual boxing fan, didn't get to attend that fight. That fight Dude. was nothing but celebrities Business and man. and high rollers, and, man. Yeah, you know what I mean. The casual boxing fan didn't get to attend. Very that fight, few. Which kind of sucks, man. Very, very few. Oh, that sucks. And that does suck. You know, but, but going into the fight, so I had figured, yeah, three million, no doubt. And then as we're getting closer to the fight, I see more and more people talking about where are you going for the fight? Are you going to watch it in a buddy's house? And I'm thinking, all right, because it's $100, yeah. a lot of people are going to get together in Group groups yeah. and watch it. So the buy rate and I still may go that. down yeah. due to that. But I think it's one of those where everybody had at least a group that they were going. So, like, pretty much every third household on any street you go to, right. one of those three houses probably had we're it. We're going to have it. With a bunch right. of friends over. Right. So, the awareness was so much greater that you could have a bunch of people partying up to watch it and still have the easily the biggest buy and rate. And, of course, as, as far as the buy rate, you know, is considered with pay-per-view companies, it's who orders. It's who... Who takes that remote, remote control yeah. and, and orders the pay-per-view. That's where you get the buy rate. Now, it doesn't matter Remember if... Remember back when you get the call to order a pay-per-view on the phone? Right, right, right. If, if 10 or 15 people are in a house, yeah. that only counts for one buy rate. Or, you know, one pay-per-view like buy rate. Page views, yeah. Right, right. There might so be that only seven counts page views watching the show, but there's one unique order. Right, right, yeah. exactly. I wish we could get the number of... I mean, they measure... They said rate. it's going to take about a week. No, but I wish they could get the number of people, like... Total people, total eyeballs watching that yeah, screen. Oh my god! Oh my god! And it would be super. Bowl. It would be 40, 50, 60 million. If they you gotta do, think if it's four million buys, you got to think there's at least let's do two. three. Well, uh, let's even do my right. official. If you're asking my guess, what do you think? Three point five. Three five. I guess, but I'll they're saying four or better. That's what they're saying. And a show this big, it, it's man. so hard to even try and guess where it'll fall. I'll say, I'll, 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 we can I'll, agree that it'll be the biggest pay per view in history after this. Not only order wise, give me an exact number. Three five. I'll say three point five. I'll say 3.3. 3. 3.3? 3. 3. And that would still be the most ordered show in history uh -huh. and easily the most financially lucrative. Oh, my God. The Absolutely. most financially lucrative is not Mayweather De La Hoya. No. It's Mayweather uh, Canelo Alvarez, I believe. Right. Because they charge so much more. Oh, oh the total income. I think that included gate receipts, uh, right. ticket sales and shit. Yeah. But either way, I think... I think 3.5, but I would love to know the number of eyeballs that were just watching it and compare it to the Super Bowl, because it really... If the Super Bowl was on pay-per-view, how many buys do you think it would get at $100 for the show? Oh, my God. Well, the Super, Bowl, seven, draws, eight, maybe? The Super Bowl draws over 100 million people yeah, every because, year. But it's free. Um, but it's free. And it's not... It's it, free. Forget pay-per-view. If it's pay-per-view and $100. If it's, it's pay-per-view yeah. and $100. Yeah. Um, maybe $10 million? The Super Bowl? Yeah. No, ten million. If if no, it, it would be it it would be over a hundred million. No, absolutely. People are going to get together. A hundred million people are going to order it. Not order it. No, that's what I'm asking. How many oh. people would order it if it was? Am, a oh, how, paper okay. Uh, if it was hundred dollars paper, same with same um, with Miller um, Packer. How many orders would it get at a hundred dollars? Ten million max. Ten million. Ten million max. Max. I say ten million. Right Not ten million. Yeah, yeah, probably maybe, about ten million. Maybe it could be eleven or twelve. Who knows? And that's a total horse shit guess. Right, 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 right. You know, I say ten million. Yeah, I would think the same thing but, would happen. People but group with up. those people grouping up and yeah. partying, you would have over a hundred million. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. Right. right, right. Well, I get what you're saying. Yeah. I know, I know. I'm saying if everything was even. Right, right, right. Let's right. say Mayweather Pacquiao does 4 million. Let's say Super Bowl 
did the same thing. You no, have to buy gonna, it. It has to be a hundred dollars. Right, right. You know, a lot of people but, are going to group up. I still think it would at least say this, double. If you say, let's go with your four million buy rate number. No, no, mine's three point five. All right, all right. Let's go with four million. Okay, all let's right. Go with four it. million people ordered for a hundred dollars on pay per view. Now, that's unique people order. That's a, almost a half a billion right there. By How itself. many people order <laughs> if it, if it's four million buys and all of those people had 10 people at their house, that yeah. would be 40 million people watching. So I would say, I'd say a good, as far as eyeballs yes. are concerned, I'd say a good 20 million. Now we're talking live eyeballs, because you know how many people live are downloaded, right, or right. do replays, or stream. I'd know. say live, if, if it did 4 million buys. And, that, and this Saturday, I'm sorry, there's a fight on HBO, they're advertising it, and the undercard is going to be the replay of Mayweather Pacquiao. Oh, is it? All right, That's all HBO's right. move, they're they've always right. done that. Um, if 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 it did four million buys, which is probably a little bit less than that, maybe not, maybe not. We we don't know. We really don't know what to tell. Yeah. If it did four million buys, with the parties and everything else, I would say eyeballs on the action. I'd say twenty million. I would probably even go a little higher than that. Twenty five. I'd say about thirty, thirty five million. Yeah. If you factor in internet streams, illegal because you got to think there's a couple million insane, watching that way too. Man. That is insane. Right, at least a couple million watching on internet streams. Yeah, I would say there's absolutely. more. That was probably the most watched stream in, in, in internet pay per view oh, stream history probably, too. Probably, probably in illegal streaming history right, too. Yeah, right. But uh, yeah. Uh, what about the fight? Uh, the conversation over. We pretty much covered the fight. The fight was the business. The fight itself was. Ah, that's what I'm talking about. I know. That, that underwhelming? Was my, that was my joke, yeah. Like, underwhelming? After the business, this, the, the fight was over. That's all that really made it such a big event was the money and the business involved. I said, and you agreed with me, yeah. but I was talking to Dan, and I said, dude, it's going to be a, the same Mayweather. Mayweather runs around, he runs around, and he counters, he counters, oh. he counters. He waits for Pacquiao to come in. No, in the first couple of rounds, Mayweather attacked. Mayweather came out. And Mayweather was started fucking, strong as hell in the yeah, first round. That shocked me. Yeah. And Pacquiao did. Listen, anybody who's been a fan of this show for a while, that, that was the fight down to the T that right. I described for years. Right. There was a time where everybody was on Pacquiao's dick. Oh, he would fight. He's the one guy that can beat Mayweather. And I was always sitting here. No. Mayweather wins by decision. Any Floyd Mayweather versus. You could put any name you want right there. Guess what the outcome's going to be? Mayweather. Mayweather by decision. But Mayweather Not just is Mayweather. A, Mayweather by decision. Mayweather is is it's the same Mayweather yeah. every time, man. He run. He waits for the dude to come in. He waits for the and he counters and he counters. And he's every, so fast. Yeah. He's so fast when he counters that you can't get around it. He's, but yeah. Let me ask you this: Manny Pacquiao, torn rotator cuff, mm -hmm. going to be out for nine months, has to go undergo surgery. Right, and he didn't bitch. He didn't complain before the fight. After the fight, he well, did say something they about did it. it from the, uh, so, are they going to do a rematch? No, they're not. I mean, I'm sure. You don't think they're going to do? It. There's no. Will they try? Absolutely. Will they get it done? Look how long it took them to get this one done, and this one was the one. I mean, years ago it was the All one right, that happened me, after the fact. But because I only gave I only gave Pacquiao two, maybe three rounds yeah. in that entire fight. Uh, I think he got. I think I gave Pacquiao rounds two, four, two, three, and four. Maybe. I think it might have been two, know. three, and four. I got um, pretty drunk watching it. I think it was two and four, and I was kind of eh, with round three. Yeah. But definitely two and four I gave to Pacquiao. If if Pacquiao, I mean, listen, to go out there and fight with a torn rotator, bro, cup, you that's, really, that's in boxing, badass, oh, dude. Right. Another thing that would be worse is if you're a pitcher in the Major League Baseball or, or a quarterback in, in, the, in the National Football League. Because, I mean, right. that's all this yeah, right there. With it's the, all or, or But at the same time, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. you're all right on that with your punches, too, and your defense, for that matter. Being a able torn to rotator cuff is not a, a yeah. you know, a sprained ankle Dude. type injury. It's torn, torn rotator, rotator cuff. That's, yeah. that's, that's pretty That's where you get all your bad movement, bad. you know, right. your shoulder. So... Why not do a rematch and see this Pacquiao could could Pacquiao do any better against Mayweather without without that injury? You know what I mean? You've got to do a rematch. There's too much money that's out on the table, and not only that, but Jim Ross. And then we'll move on. We'll get into wrestling. Jim Ross made an excellent point. I get Las Vegas. It's the mecca for big UFC events for big boxing. You know events. why that is, right? Uh, I, with the gambling and everything yeah, else, that's right, the only right. Reason. It's the mecca, right? And and you gotta Vegas is all the big fights. But listen, that's why Atlantic City is the other mecca. Why, why? <clears throat> and Jim Ross made a great point. Why not 
Cowboy Stadium with a casual boxing fan. You can still gamble in Las Vegas, man. You can still make a ton of money. A lot of people are still going to come to Vegas for that fight. Why not? With all the tickets and the amount that tickets were being priced at and what people were paying for tickets, instead of having 16,400 and whatever fans in a building, why not have 110,000 fans in a building all paying that money? You, you would have made you would have made double the amount that you're making in in Vegas. You're looking at just their thing, and here's what here's why Vegas is the fight capital of the world, and Atlantic City's not. And then casual I, fans would have been able to attend. I'm sorry. Well, what Go happens ahead. is, it's it's the economy boost, which is why everybody in, in the MMA world can't understand why New York will not legalize MMA. Yeah. If you could legalize it and tax it, it would bring millions upon millions of dollars to your economy, to Absolutely. your local market, Absolutely. every time they put a show yeah. on it, where it becomes even more lucrative in Vegas, is that all these people come in from out of town, Right. they stay in expensive hotels, it's a guarantee they're going to throw money down gambling, so they get more money into the town of Las Vegas, between the ticket sales, the hotels, the food, because everything's more expensive... The gambling's where they really get you because while you're there and you're killing time, there's nothing to do other than either gamble or go watch a high price show. Either way, you're right. spending a lot of money but outside of just the ticket you bought in the hotel. You're but that's going to happen in Dallas too. People there's are no going to come in, in, in Dallas. Not, not, not uh, gambling. We got to take out gambling. That's but the big thing. Hotel, I, I, I get that. But that's people, why, people are still going to gamble and people are going to call in for a big fight like yeah, that. But not, you can't gamble in Dallas or Arlington or whatever. Yeah. The money goes into the into the town of Vegas when you're in Vegas and an event's in Vegas but and you're gambling in Vegas. Wouldn't a hundred and ten thousand people versus sixteen thousand people kind of make up the difference for the oh, yeah. gambling of loss? Course. I of mean, course. you can make up the difference. Now, if you're looking at it from their perspective, yeah, it'd be bigger business. But then again, you got to look at the people who's putting the money down for the fight, so you can guarantee Mayweather fifty million dollars for a one night's work. True. Like, True. Uh, what was his big quote during the, what some of the countdown shit? He was like. You know, well, six figures for 36 minutes work, not that yeah, bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Motherfucker. You fucking cocksucker. But I just, I, I just think it would have made, you know, at all the in Dallas or a stadium or something like that, man. And I think it would have, the atmosphere just would have been, you know, I mean, think about WrestleMania every year, man. That whole crowd and just, yeah. the, the, I, man, so I don't know. It would have been I think cool there was a lot of money lost. To see it be a stadium show would have been cool, but I think they jacked the prices up so much. Yeah. Pay per view. Yeah. There's no such thing as money lost there because no matter where you held. But isn't that a slap in the face to the casual boxing fan that follows the sport? Boxing's not all that great these days, man. There's not many big fights boxing's left. Over now. Boxing's uh, the, the beautiful thing is everybody thinks, right? "Oh, boxing's alive again. Look how so, big this fight was." That's the last <laughs> one. So the one big There's fight left. The one big fight yeah. that everybody wants to see. The boxing fans that have supported you through the tough times. They don't get to see the fight. Very few of them get to see the fight because tickets were so through the roof, dude. And and private jets. You saw the the photo of yeah, uh, was, all the private jets. And the other know, thing is the viewing experience. You want to make sure no matter. There's no such. We've been to the MGM Grand. We watched UFC there. Right. No such thing as a bad seat in that entire building. The way the stage setup is. Now you go to Arlington. You go to AT and T Stadium and you try and pack a hundred thousand people in. Pretend you're way up in the upper deck watching Mayweather jab and hold for 12 rounds. You'd probably be pretty pissed you wasted that amount of money. You couldn't see shit. They're going to do it for WrestleMania 32 next year. If you're Dude. way in the upper deck and you're Bro. looking down and you're seeing a clothesline. He doesn't listen. He doesn't listen. You can make pro wrestling exciting. You can guarantee it'll be exciting by the way you lay your match up. Boxing's real and Mayweather makes sure it's really boring. If you're sitting in the nosebleeds and all you get is this and this. And a touch and uh, and a touch and uh, they got the thirty six minutes. They got the big screen up top. All right, so you wasted just that be, much money to just to sit in, there and watch them jab. To be in that building, Stop it. to be in that building for the biggest fight of yeah. all time. This I agree with you. They should have opened it up in a market where they could have sold more tickets. Yeah. More people could be there first. Yeah, the fuck. Et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the bottom line is, I understand why they didn't. It's a business thing. I completely know. Vegas. It's, it's a gambling. It's business. And you're getting all the high rollers. That's I what, know. anybody who can afford a ticket to Mayweather Pacquiao has a couple bucks in the bank. And then when you bring the high rollers in town, and think about how much they're money. gambling, too. That's the whole That's point. That's that money. Yeah. That's that money. I mean, 90, so. You know, it's all celebrities and businessmen it's and a, it's, a business, it's a business oh my first God. and foremost, right? That's first and foremost. Yeah, Everything is secondary foremost. after that. Exactly. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> let's, uh, let's get these plugs out of the way, and then I want to go back two weeks, man. You and I, 
your first time ever, yeah. ever, at a Monday Night Raw in Albany, New York. All right. uh, we're going to talk about that. Uh, Boone and I, we took Jacob. Jacob had a great he time. Had a blast. Man. Oh man! Yeah. But uh, you and I will talk about our. You remember experience. taking the picture next to the superhero guy? I do. I don't. You don't? I saw, and I didn't drink that night. You did. did you remember see, that? Did you see Jacob? He's like this. Yeah, he did it perfect. Guy. All right. Uh, you remember that though? I didn't drink that night. I didn't have did. one beer the whole time I was there. You didn't. He was putting them down. It was at the very end of the show. We were walking out. Yeah. And uh, is that what happened? Right there. Maybe right. I was just super at the tired, very, very yeah. end of the uh, uh, super tired tonight. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so we're gonna go back a couple of weeks to Monday night. Rob Boone and I were there, and uh, they had the cage match. Uh, that's the raw that we're talking about. Oh, so, can I read that? Dino UK with the line of the night so far. What's that? And there's so many different inside jokes you could play off of this with Mayweather's history. But he says, Mr. Dino UK in the chat room, we will plug the chat room in a second, says, Mayweather, uh, right when I go to read it, it scrolls up, you motherfucker. <laughs> Mayweather did a John Jones. He hit and ran. Oh! He hit oh, and ran. Oh, oh man. Oof. Ouch. Low blow to John Jones. But anyway. Uh, good line. John That's John, one of the big I stories. talk about John Jones, yeah, too. Yeah, right there. All right, so and I these. broke it. You did? Matty Boone yeah. broke that story on MMANews.com. You guys had 200,000 uniques that higher was, than that? that? No, it was 2,000 uniques the day it no, happened. 2,000? 200,000? Oh, 200,000 uniques. What did I say? 200,000 yeah, 200, uniques. 200,000 uniques. We could have filled uh, Cowboy Stadium twice. And uh, this guy one bro- day, this guy broke the John Jones yeah. stories. I can vouch for it. You broke it. Well, everybody Brian it broke it, but it was on Twitter, well, and then yeah, we broke it on the site. Bleacher Report, CNN, because CNN links to Bleacher Report. Yeah. They took it from you. You guys had two hundred thousand unique. And then the next day, we did like one hundred sixteen thousand. MMANews.com, yeah. man, Matty Boone. Our in live, the <laughs> you the, sure. our in live peaked at like I'm, fifteen thousand. I mean, there was fifteen thousand different people, different computers. I'm not. At one second, like I'm right not, now, bam! I'm not. I'm not quick. trying to make fun of you yeah. or anything like that. But when Boone put up that story, right? Yeah. He come running in my room. He says, "Yo, dude, <laughs> you is gotta this? see yeah. this, bro. You gotta see this." Brought me in here. It is in live, like you just said, with 14, like fourteen thousand and something. Fifteen thousand, almost yeah. fifteen thousand people on the site at one time, right? Yes. I, I'm like Jesus, dude. That's <laughs> yeah. I go back in my room, right, and I hear Boone in here. What the? Fuck is going on? <laughs> what the fuck is? It's going like fourteen thousand, yeah. fifteen thousand, sixteen thousand. It's going up and up and up. I'm like, well, Jesus, like, to get man. a thousand would mean you're doing insane yeah. traffic. Right, yeah, one thousand right. with fourteen thousand and change at at it one was, time. It was crazy. At one time, it was crazy. It was nuts. And you got a you got a nice I got a nice bonus that, for that. So. Yes. All right. So let's get these plugs out of the way. We're going back to Raw from a couple of weeks ago. Talk about that in Albany, New York. We're going to talk about Raw from last night as well. Um, I thought Raw was so PG last night, almost G. At, at you didn't like Raw at, last night. It wasn't. A, I like, thought it was a damn good show. I put it on compared Facebook. to the shit we saw live. I, I put ahead. it on Facebook. I I, I said. It's not a terrible show, but it's just a lot of PG and G stuff tonight with the corny jokes and the comedy, especially the opening segment. They kicked it off with the New Day out oh, there, God, and then throughout the brutal. night, yeah, throughout yeah. the night, there were numerous New Day segments. Somebody, yeah. somebody likes the New Day somebody in WWE, funny or they like that. Somebody they, loves that. They either think it's funny or they like that. They know that they annoy the crowd and that the crowd yeah, hates them yeah. so much that it's kind of like, oh, oh let's. Make it a funny thing. Like, Triple they hate him so much that it's funny. Triple H came out and said that he was a real big fan of uh, Xavier Woods today. Uh, actually, on the uh, special. They love that he has on, a PhD. I know that. That, too. That, yeah. too. All right, or so. It's a, it's a PhD. Talk about Raw from last yeah. night. In our numero dos. I know Jackie has been itching. She's been tweeting. She has been Facebooking itching. Me. Oh, call man. in about this Rusev and Lana stuff. What's going on there? Uh, I got, got a big scoop you, online. Yeah. Yeah, we do have a big scoop online. I put it up on the website earlier today. We're going to give it to you here tonight. Get these plugs out of the way. Go back to Raw from a couple of weeks ago. In our number, numero dos. And taking your live phone calls and rapid fire. Talking to backstage news and rumors that we've missed over the last couple of weeks. Thanks to you guys that are joining us tonight. I know we're going against uh, pretty tough competition tonight with uh, the ESPN special. Something that I wanted to watch. I wanted to watch that, man. Bring up any competition you want. I you know what's going to be. Gonna you know what's going to be on ESPN.com tomorrow. Download it as soon as like we get that. off the right. Anyways, uh, um, <laughs> the that's official, not going to be on the network, is it? 
No, that's an ESPN. There's a lot of new shit here in the network. Uh, we did the hey, Jericho a lot Stephanie of stuff, thing, man. the Jerry Springer show, the uh, Roman Reigns thing last night was good. Renee Young's got the, Renee uh, Young's got the unfiltered She's thing. actually got Reese Witherspoon and uh, another actress I on this week's uh, show. Right. We just put a preview up. All right, the official home uh, website of like WZR TV, WZRonline.com. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as well. Go to Facebook.com slash WZR Army, YouTube.com slash WZR Archive. We're on Twitter as well. Well, all you got to do is go to WZRonline.com, top navigation bar, social media tab. It's got a drop-down menu. It's got all the links to Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. WZRonline.com, the official home of WZR TV Tuesdays. Got a live chat room on and in progress. Lots and lots of people. Well, not too many people in that tonight, but anyways. We got it. It's, it's up and it's going. Our live chat room, WZRonline.com. <laughs> Still got it after two weeks. Slash chat. WZRonline.com. I think we recall taking chat. two years off in the past. And hey, coming still back at like it. nothing was still at it, man, yeah. right? Anyways, we got a lot Anyways. to get to. So, uh, like I said, WZRonline.com. Slash chat. Get in there. Lots and lots of people. A little bit. Uh, in there tonight. All right. So, a couple of weeks ago. Couple. Monday Night Raw Monday. comes to the Times Union Center Albany, in New York. Albany, New York. Yes. You and I. Decide to go. We go down there, and uh, we wait in line for tickets because we waited until the last minute. I had Chance. said to you, yes. I had said to you, there's no way that Ross sells out. Da 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 da. da. I said we can go. We can buy the cheapest ticket My there. Sucked. Didn't we have trouble finding three together for me, you and Jake? Well, I said to you, so we can buy. I said we can go and we can get twenty dollar tickets. We can sit in the very and upper deck, down. and then we yeah. can scoot it down. We can move down throughout the night. That's what you do, man. Of you buy the cheapest tickets. You go in there. You got a ticket to get into the building, and then you move down below. Nine times out of ten, seat. they're going to curtain off that top level that you right. buy your ticket for and say, well, you can at least sit here, and then it's so, so empty that you just slowly, surely move down. You, down. You, just, you buy the cheapest ticket just to get in, unless you're looking Although, for four seats or something like that, and you want to be on camera, which... If we relied on this guy, we would have been stuck in shitty seats all night. I wasn't happy. So we go, no, we go there, right? And uh, we get start. up. There's a long line, yeah. first and foremost. The walk up to this event was big, man. Bigger than usual. Uh, much yeah. bigger than usual. And it was a decent so house for an Albany roll. We get up there, and I, I, I tell the guys, I said, yeah, I just need uh, three of the cheapest tickets. There, and it was actually a woman. And, and the woman says to me, ah, the, uh, the, the cheapest that we have is, is $48. Oh. $48 a piece. $48 a piece, right? They had all the $20 seats fucking cur curtained off anyway. They could have sold something. Uh, I, they really didn't, dude. So, so... I mean, they didn't. They had the whole curtain where we were sitting above them. They had the Titantron, which is always tarped off in the back. Over and on then, our side, on the left. And then I think there was one section in the, the entire... Top one section yeah. which was next to us that was tarped off. That was the one I saw. The entire building was damn near a sellout, man. Just about. I mean... I, couldn't believe it. So well, I mean, the, the the report you saw the reported figure. <coughs> I don't agree with that. But yeah, I don't either. Yeah. Uh, I was looking at the building. There, there six, was not that many 6, open 000? seats. No, there was no, no, no. They, they said eight, eight thousand and change or something. 000, and that, that building holds what? Fourteen. It's a fourteen thousand. There was not six thousand empty seats. There was there, there was, was not about, half an empty building. It was about ten five there, almost eleven. I probably agree. Probably about eleven. I agree. 000, and, and you do understand that the reported numbers, the, where they come from, it's an estimate. And I won't right. blast the guy because yeah. he's the greatest. But yeah, it is a complete, complete. I yes. trust this guy and this right. this fan and this and, and some information I can collect by calling. But you don't ever get it. they bullshit. WWE lies about their advertising. The the entire the the bottom level itself holds seven thousand fans. And there wasn't almost a the entire, scene. almost the entire yeah. top deck. So you've got. I said we had two thirds of the top deck all fucking filled up, yeah. and every yeah. floor seat was sold. Right, right. Floor seat being not just the front it row, was, the, it was the damn floor. near a sellout. So anyway, I, I go up to the lady. You know, it's forty eight dollars a ticket, yeah. and uh, even so for I said, a little man. I said no, 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 no. So I said forty eight dollars a ticket. I said, well, I got this guy. He's he's you two. know about two years old. Oh, yeah. She says. Well, is he over or is he under two? Well, he's over two, but I said he's just about to turn two, yeah. right? Knowing that if he was over two, he wasn't. So she says to me, well, is he going to sit on your lap? And I said, absolutely, he's going to yeah. you know, sit on my lap. So 
you and I we only didn't, but yeah. You and I were forty eight bucks a pop. Yes. All right, forty eight dollars a pop, and we got Jacob in for free. He sat on my lap, or he stood in front of me, ooh, whatnot. Um, but he yeah, had four fly. He sat in a chair, pimping it with the popcorn, yeah, yeah. And soda, and he was chilling. God, eight dollars for a popcorn, six dollars for a soda. We got chicken nuggets but at one point. It was like chicken twelve. Chicken nuggets. <laughs> it was ridiculous. But anyways, uh, we had. Uh, Jacob had a great time. Now, you and I are sitting there like, man, this show sucks. This sucks. And this chair's hurt my back. I sit there too long. Oh, man. The broken back. And we're sitting there. This show sucks. And I come home, and and I go on Facebook, and I say, yeah, that show is terrible. And everybody said, it wasn't that bad. What are you talking about, right? It was like a world... I'll let you finish. Go ahead. And this is the one where the cage, they had the cage above. Where Kane had that great promo. I'll tell you what. Yeah. So I come home, right, and everybody said it wasn't that bad of a show. The next morning, I went and I watched video, video highlights yeah. from Raw. It wasn't that bad. That's what I was just getting ready it to say. It wasn't there that bad. There is a complete disconnect from being there live versus watching it on TV. And a lot of it, at least in my opinion, and I could be dead wrong, comes from the expectation factor. Oh, yeah? You are expecting so little mm-hmm. from Raw every week. That right. Like, last night's show was considered great just because Sami Zayn debuted... Although I got in trouble for writing debut earlier today. He's been on Raw before in the past. I said, that's not debuting. God, come on, man. All right, his return. I said, should I put return? That sounds stupid. Sami Zayn returns to Raw. But anyways, because Sami Zayn was on Raw, because there was a decent promo from... Uh, Ryback. Ryback, because John Cena was able to turn Talk the crowd. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so there, because there was like one or two things you could pick out that was kind of good, the show, the three-hour show as a whole, was like, wow, what a great show this week. Mm-hmm. Us being there, it was literally match that doesn't matter after match that doesn't matter after match that doesn't matter. And there wasn't a lot of pre-taped anything. There wasn't almost hardly any in-ring anything as far as talking yeah. for the whole three. It was just pointless matches I will say, that didn't deliver that great. It was I, a couple decent matches, but it's not like, oh, what a great show because that match was kind of good. Right, right. Know. I will say, when, during the main event, right, they brought down the cage and Randy Orton was under the that ring. That felt big. And Randy Orton, right before the cage yeah. came all the way down, Randy Orton jumps in the ring, so he's trapped in there yes. with Seth Rollins, right? And this is going into Extreme Rules where the RKO is banned, you've got a cage match where nobody can get in. Did you Randy Orton... Wasn't no. Seth tra- trapped with Orton? Seth and Orton were trapped in the ring. Yeah, you Randy made it sound like the... Orton was trapped with Seth, like, oh, Seth yeah, got well, him. Well, uh, whatever. Uh, so okay. the cage comes all the way down, right? And Randy Orton hit this RKO off the cage on the Seth. I don't even remember. That was pretty sick, I don't man. even remember it. That was sick, man. God, I watched it. Uh, you were the one drinking, you remember it, and I don't. I watched it on replay the, uh, the next morning, man. The RKO, where the cage came down, uh, Seth Rollins was climbing up the ropes, that got to the cage. Randy Orton comes up behind and hit the uh, the RKO off of it. It was pretty sick, man. That was a nasty spot. I but can't remember <coughs> I thought Kane, also in Albany, cut a hell of a promo. Kane. He got real mad. In he got real angry. Yeah, right, he, right. He, yeah, that was like the, as far as being there live. Kind of the like, highlight. <laughs> there was the, it was like the one moment that actually you remember from right. the show. Like everything else kind of bleeds together because none of it really stood out. Right, right. Whereas then you go online the next day and you listen to the radio shows you're used to listening to. Yep. The podcast from Steve Austin, this, Jim Ross, that. Right. They're talking raw. Dixie. Everybody's talking about oh, it. Like, go ahead. Uh, I don't mean cut. Dixie Carter, her podcast uh, with Steve Austin. Yeah, I haven't heard it yet. Yeah, but no, no. It was part one, I'm not sorry. two. Okay. Uh, right. He had Shane Douglas one and two last week. I, I've right. really cooled off on listening to those podcasts. I viewed, I, I viewed a recap today. A guy from cheap-pops.com sent the re- a transcript of it. It sounds awesome. I'm so 19 a that I keep... I, I don't even, even I with Dixie? Lose. Yeah. Really? I don't care. Like, what is she going to be talking about? She's going to have to be talking about TNA, and I don't care. Yeah, but care. Austin, you know how Austin is with the questions that but he's But it's got to be about Dixie. something I either remember as a kid or something that I think's cool or something that I... What about, like, the state of TNA? Because that's what they addressed. Mm. The state of TNA and, I don't and it was. the future and the money issues and, and the paychecks being bounced. And Austin got into all of that stuff, man. Who was it? With, with there production. was some interview you were telling me I had. It was a Dixie Carter shoot interview of some kind where she even broke a story on there. It was like like a year ago almost. And, and I said you had to watch I it and you didn't to. do it. never even watched yeah. a minute of it. But no. you're a fan of Austin's podcast. I love it. Right. So but because he. I, it depends on the guest. Which is why I'm glad, like, we use it. We used to suffer from this. Our show was like every other show. 
we were just a fucking couple of douchebags that talked about wrestling, but primarily to set up our big interviews, because mm-hmm. we would book all these guests every week. And it became a running thing where our show is only as good as our guests, because the only people that are going to tune in are people that are interested in the guests we have. So if we don't have a big name guest, nobody's going to listen to us, mm-hmm. which is when I came up with the philosophy of trying to come up with little fucking segments and bits that we could make as a you know, mailbag. And fucking this and that. And then when I handed it off to you, you took it to a whole other level. And now we're at literally a show to where we don't have to have a single guest. Like, almost sometimes we have a guest that hurt our show. Because people are looking forward to listening to us and having fun and the same bullshit we do. And if we have a guest that they don't care about, it's like, wow, we got to waste 40 minutes of our, our two hours once a week on an interview no, with no. some guy <laughs> we don't even fucking like. Like, don't, like, don't let him fool you, man. Ryan Clark made this show, and that's just oh, the bottom line, because... Well, see, I mean, you can rewrite the history if you want. But, it. Yeah. Boone, Boone <clears throat> actually founded this show with somebody else and brought me on. No, I didn't. I found it with you. It was you and I now for a while. Mm-mm. We it would was, do the hotlines. Oh, the hotlines. I even right. had you doing a hotline. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We were all doing hotlines, right, right, and then right. me and you, because we would there was a thing called Instant Messenger, off, right, AOL yeah. Instant Messenger, yeah, yeah. and yeah. they had a talk feature on it, and you could talk to each yeah. other. Yeah, and I had never even met the kid yet, but we got along so good when we talked, and we we had similar interests as far as wrestling and right. life and shit. Right. That when I decided to stop doing hotlines and do an actual radio show, right, I'm thinking, who do I want? With? I said that guy Ryan I talked to, man. I think me and him on the air would it would be like a good back and forth. Yeah, that's how we that's how we and came about. Pretty we much used to man. pre. Oh shit! You unplug it. Ah, damn it. Yeah, I did. Oh well. We'll get everything we used to back. Pre- but, uh, yeah, we used to pre-record. Is that where you're going? We used to pre-record everything the with, whole the, show. with the interviews and everything yeah. else, man. Uh, Not just the interview. We would pre-record the whole show. I remember the reason we became live was a certain uh, a certain guy. Yeah, well, okay. All right, we, it was a certain guy that I won't talk about. But the only reason we know this guy is because he said, "Oh, I can make you live." Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah. No, I know and who you're talking we, about. We made him real big, and uh, yeah. Yeah, no, I know, I know, I know. now we regret it. There's so many people I can look back that I've made, like, I gave them a career, and oh, I ended up to regret it. Oh, man, oh, man. But anyway, so, back to Raw, I mean, it'll start. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's going to go in a sec. But uh, anyway, so, I, I listen, all I cared about was taking the Jacob to his first WWE live event ever. I was pretty he so had, hard, yeah. He had, that boy has to go. You and I were real. Yeah. Allison didn't she want him to nervous. go. She's a good mom. She's it, scared of her kid being It was going to be too building. loud yeah. and with the entrance music and the and pyro. And at first, he was freaked out. He didn't like it at first. I don't like, didn't like this. It. I don't like this. Within yeah. two seconds, he was uh. In love with the whole everything. He when loved Cena it. Came out, the he big, was he was, when Cena came out, he was mesmerized. Yeah. He couldn't even talk. It's like, Cena. he was in awe. Like, I think he he was comprehending in his little tiny, cute little fucking kitty brain. Like, like Cena oh is my God, right there. Oh, my God, the guy I watch on TV, he's right there. He's right there. He's it right, was... Uh, he's yeah. right over there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was right there. He had a great time. And then they announced uh, for the first time at a WWE TV taping or even a live event that NXT is going to be going on the road. Uh, and we're going. We're going. How about the King? No, May 16th. Oh, God, that's like next week. Man. It's two weeks from now, or about a week from now. Maybe next week. But yeah, it's. I think it's May 16th or the 18th. They're going to do Philadelphia on Thursday and Friday. They're coming to Albany on Saturday. Which building? Boone and I, the uh, Washington Avenue Armory. Is, They're going uh, to an armory? So what is it, hold like 500 people? It's about 3,000. It holds 3,000? About 3,000. 2,500, 3,000. So what do you think it'll, you think it'll sell out? Um, you know, if you, I mean, this is not a a very good way to base the attendance, but if you had a hashtag NXT Albany, everybody's got their tickets, man. Everybody, hit uh, restore. Uh, Everybody seems to have their tickets, so it seems like tickets are selling pretty damn good, man. If Raw can sell... That's what I was thinking. I mean, even conservatively, what was reported was eight and some change. The real number is probably about ten and some change. Yeah. You know what? Maybe that's what it is. He doesn't include comps. That could be it. So maybe there's like fifteen hundred comps. Maybe the walk-up? No, if it was a ticket sold, he should have the uh, information. Right. Because he calls right. the building directly, usually. Right, right. Uh, but his... The, it was way off. There was no off, way it was eight. So anyway, we had a good time. But uh, my point being, if they could sell that many tickets to a random Raw, 
Why Actually, not? it was a post-pay-per-view Raw, wasn't it? It was the night after Extreme Rules. No, it was pre-pay-per-view. It was the go-home show. It was the go-home show to uh, Extreme Rules. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, because yeah. the cage and the RKO. Cage yeah, and yeah, the yeah, RKO yeah, yeah. being banned and everything else. So, All right, we're going to try to load our, our chat room back up here. Uh, we're working on doing that right now, but uh, we need to get into a Monday Night Raw from last night. Boy, it was the New Day show. Last night on Raw. By the way, the rating came out today. It was a 2.7 last week. It dropped to a 2.6 this week. I can tell you firsthand, and you guys can probably see. I know we've got competition tonight. A lot of people are watching the ESPN special, at least for hour number one. I think it's from 8 to 9. Good. But I want a nice document. I can tell you firsthand that. We have at least WZR online, and I had asked you about it before we came on here. For the last two weeks, I'm like record low traffic. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah, no. record low traffic. I, right, numbers are down, man. Traffic is terrible. Um, at least on my end for WZRonline.com, almost uh, almost cut in half for me, and I. Don't I mean ratings are ratings are down? Here's our chat. They're not in half though, but yeah, I know what you mean. And it, it's that thing every year where it peaks for WrestleMania. Right after WrestleMania, it hangs for about a week or two. Yeah, and then and then just plummets, it plummets. Man. I mean, not a gradual. Been... Now we're going back down. It goes, it goes, do 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 do, and then like Boom. the last week before Mania, pew. Yeah, yeah. And then the week after Mania, it plateau, and then the next week. Bam! Well, way you know, back. You know what else I also was thinking too is, I mean, this is you know switching switching topics, but I thought you know after WrestleMania and then they always go on the annual UK tour, the right? Tour, yeah. And I was thinking, all right, the and that was the annual house clean too. Well, that's what I'm getting. To, oh, okay. Is WrestleMania is over and you've got the UK tour, which is over. You've got the earnings report, earnings report, which well, is I over. Now, granted. Too. The earnings report this time around, because WrestleMania fell in the first quarter, normally WrestleMania falls in the second quarter. Yeah. And normally WrestleMania is very early April it fell for, in the second for quarter this year, WrestleMania. Right? It fell in the first quarter this year. I thought year. it was in April. Because was WrestleMania March? was March 28th, I want to say. When was WrestleMania? I March? it was like April 5th or something. I think WrestleMania, it was in March. It was oh, March okay. 28th or the 30th or somewhere mm-hmm. around there is when WrestleMania. So it fell in the first quarter. So when they came out and reported those earnings, they were all good. Everything was way up because everybody ordered for the network. Everybody ordered on pay-per-view, this, that, and the other thing. They got big numbers for the first quarter. Now, when the second quarter comes around, but ah, yeah, normally the rules was April. Okay. Right, right. I'm thinking normally, I'm normally what happens it. is you get WrestleMania, you get the UK tour, and then they report the first quarter earnings. And normally, the first quarter it's the worst quarter of the year. Yes. Then you see the roster cuts right after that. So we had WrestleMania, we had the UK tour, then we had the earnings report, which was above normal because WrestleMania, and there were no cuts once again this year. What are the cuts coming? Are there going to be cuts? It's been, I'd say, two years, maybe three years. No, the, the, where there haven't been major cuts. There was a last year. There was a time where they did. It was who? Was You're the, right. There was a time. Drew McIntyre, Brodus Clay. That 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 week. But it, it was, was like, late. It was, it was, like was late in the year. Yeah, no, you're like right. September. It wasn't when they normally do it, but they did do some spring cleaning. Yeah. Uh, yeah. This year they haven't done a big bulk. Unless you count the annex, maybe that was what they their move this year. Let's cut some fat off the bottom. Instead of the top, but the NXT guys that were cut weren't being used on television That's or on the, the network. Point. Yeah, cut the fat. Like if we're not using them, we don't have the budget for it with the network upstart. Although, yeah, but if, if, if you're trying to make budget cuts, the NXT guys don't get more than what five hundred a night, a thousand a night. If you're trying to they, make, we reported that uh, Big Vito, and then there was that guy that suing with them, the jobber guy that was only Evan himself. Singleton. That guy, we had his reported income, and it was like. 30 some grand a but year. But they were on the main roster. No, Singleton wasn't. Singleton wasn't. No. All but right. his was like right. 30 some grand. But if so you cut if five guys at, let's say, 30, let's just say 30 grand. There's 150 grand right there. Yeah, that's true. Not, that's it's, a fucking drop in the bucket. It's, but. It's, it's, it's true, but if you're, if you're trying to make big time. No, I got cuts, you. I, I mean, got you. You're talking like Zack Ryder, Rosa Mendez, people like that. That are earning, you know, 70, 80, 90, maybe 100,000 a yeah. year or something like Downside. that. Downside. They make Downside. more than that, but yeah. Right, right. You're trying to get Hopefully. rid of some main roster talents, which is going to save you some money here. Yeah. No, I Anyways, all right, here we go. Uh, WZRonline.com. Motherfucking die. It's uh, slash chat. WZRonline.com slash chat. All right, so Monday Night Raw from last night, man. They, uh, oh, yeah, that's where? Let's 
not raw. That's a range recap. I know they should oh, the title up there. I gotcha. I gotcha. All right. Well, let's, they uh, kicked off with that segment we were mentioning earlier, which the uh, new day Randy Sophia Orton. Vergara. Uh, that's who was on uh, Renee Young's uh, podcast. Is it nine o'clock tonight? Um, yeah, it does. What's the record low for raw numbers? Do you know that? Uh, we talked about it at two point six. No, but why is it a record? What was the record? five month? Uh, five month low. Oh, for the for last uh, five months. That's the lowest. The number. last, uh, last. It's the lowest Man, of the year. It's over. It's the lowest of the yeah. year. Here, you can get some more details Which here. Is, but, bare, uh, is the lowest viewing audience? No, for a non-holiday or football season episode of the show since nineteen ninety-seven. As far as viewers, uh, viewers are yeah, concerned. Yeah, right, not the number the average, that matters. Right, Ratings right, right. nothing. Ratings a percentage, You're right. a number. You're right. Viewers is how many odd people watched, how many TV sets were right. tuned in. And that was the lowest for a non holiday If you don't count holidays mm -hmm. or a show during NFL season, that was the lowest amount of people watching Raw since 97. It's bad. It's bad in, like... That that comes Talking to our almost traffic. Twenty years, man. That comes to our traffic. Of course, too, it affects the numbers. You've got all time low traffic. You've got all time low ratings. I mean, the you've got rating. What it means years. is you got all time low interest in the product. Yeah, and yeah. that affects website views. That affects TV ratings, merchandise sales, paper, anything that's within the wrestling realm. Jeez, I found out the reason why my traffic's down. Huh? Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, man! We're at an all time low. My God. All right, so they kicked up uh, raw. Last yeah, night. they kicked off Raw with that segment we mentioned earlier with the uh, New Day Jesus and man. the Authority guys. I'm going to kill as much time for you as I can. I'm, need I'm trying here, man. I'm it would trying. be way lower than all that shit. Come on, man. I'm trying, man. I'm trying. <coughs> this was during Raw, so obviously it's before that. Get I'm down. getting there. Would you here, chill right out? Here. Right here. All right. There so it we is. kicked it so off. Uh, New Day, the Authority, and all that shit. Yes, I we, don't specifically remember. Yeah, uh, there was there was no pyro. There was nothing nothing like that. They kicked off raw. We didn't have any pyro in uh, in Albany either, by the way. Uh, there was one time they did it. Right, just right. once. Whose was it? Do you even remember? Sheamus. I think Ryback. When Ryback comes out, it goes boom, wow. boom. Maybe. Yeah. Because it freaked Jake the fuck out. But yeah. So Randy Orton comes out and he talks about the three way match. Well, it's four way now, but the three way match at uh, the WWE Payback pay per view yes. coming up here, as in, uh, voted by you, great fans. They voted right, and uh, you know Roman Reigns winds up coming out next, right? Yes. Roman Reigns is or out here. Or the effect that nobody can stop me, and then Reigns is the music kid. Right. Almost so the day I can. Orton and Reigns go back and forth, which leads to the New Day coming out and basically saying. Well, didn't Rollins come out first, and then the New Day? I thought Rollins was uh, was later, wasn't he? I don't know. Uh, Roman's basic. Randy Orton basically says, "Listen, I've been to WrestleMania uh, how many times? Numerous times, right? I'm a however many time world champion." Yeah. And he asked Roman, Rockin Reigns. Roman, yeah. how many times have you main evented WrestleMania? One time. Yeah, how many, how many times have you been, have the you world? been WWE yeah. World Heavyweight Champion? Zero. You know. So basically, I'm Getting better the than ooze from the crowd. I'm, the, I'm better than yeah. uh, than you are, right? By the way, we were in Montreal last night, smoking hot crowd. Right, yeah. right. Long they were show. awesome. Yeah, awesome yeah, yeah. Right, man. So this leads to they're arguing back and forth. They're going back and forth, right? And the new day comes out, and uh, they basically say that their tag team champions, Xavier Woods, is first on the microphone. Biggie is a complete rip off of that guy. <laughs> He's just Biggie's got the church rip off, yes. man. You've seen that video. That's the biggie. overly enthusiastic the overly, black pastor. Right, exactly. Oh, my children! <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah. So, uh, I think it was the G Xavier Woods that brought up. We're in Xavier? Montreal. Is that how you say it? Xavier. Isn't it just Xavier Woods, or is it Xavier? Xavier. Alright, maybe it is. Anyway, so they, they bring up the uh, the Montreal screw job. I figured they'd get that out of the way real quick. Right at the beginning of the show, Montreal screw job, yeah. get it out of the way. Montreal boo hoo 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 or they, something like they that. they to reference it again in a way later. We'll get into that in when, a minute. When, when Brett? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was going to be uh, Heath Slater dressed up as Brett when that happened. Right, right. It was not. So basically, they say that they've got the numbers and uh, Roman Reigns and Randy Orton are in the ring, so we're going to have the New Day against Randy Orton and Roman Reigns, yeah. and by the way, that's coming up next, right? Yeah. And that was the opening segment. Well, Kane made, had it, was, he made it a Kane handicap made it, match. Yeah, Kane Three came out and, and made it official, but 
Uh, it was uh, the new day was out there, dude. Listen, the new day is just so corny. It comes new across. day. I thought it, you liked them, uh, dude. It comes across as so corny. I'm sure it's funny, dude, to chant "New Day, New Day, New Day sucks, New Day rock." You know what I mean, no. dude? That whole thing, but. Their promos, dude. It's like the primetime players, right? It's when you ungodly. get that backstage stuff with the primetime players, where they're dissing people and making fun of people, right? It's just it comes across as like douche chills central. I mean, douche you chills know, dude. Central for sure. Who's the ROH guy that spoke out and said it's completely fucking racist what they're doing with those guys? The RHO ROH guy. Who, who oh, oh. oh. Cedric uh, Alexander. Cedric Alexander came out. Cedric, and right. He's black, right? Right, yep. And he basically came out and was like, what the, what WWE's doing with these three guys? His name's Cedric. Alexander. Oh, okay. He's black. Ooh, who's Never the other black. Cedric? Cedric the Entertainer? I'm trying to he's, think of other Cedric. He's black. Why <laughs> drinks or why do I want to say a basketball player? Cedric. Stupid. Something. Anyway. But anyways, no, where I was getting with that was that he's saying he's completely racist. Cause you he's ever like heard of a, a white dude named Cedric? I barely know the name Cedric, to be Cedric? honest. Cedric? Cedric the Entertainer, Cedric the Alexander. That's about it, right? Yeah. There's a basketball player that I can't think of. from. I, can't, I couldn't today. picture a white dude named Cedric. <laughs> I, I can't even really picture the name Cedric. <laughs> anyway, but anyway. But anyway. All right. um, I'm sorry. Yeah, he's basically like, God, you look at the talent of guys, like, and he broke it down. Kofi Kingston, one of the best high flyers, this mm -hmm. and that. Big E, one of the best powerhouse wrestler guys, mm -hmm. and Xavier Woods, one of the smartest. He's got a PhD, and he's a great wrestler, this and that. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that WWE can come up with is to give him this stereotypical, it's fucking exactly prejudiced, biased, exactly half-ass, racist. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's got to be their game. These three guys got this much talent. You're Ross. I could see if it was the Attitude Era. All be right. happy you got a spot. We came up with something for you. Every other position is taken. You guys can be the clowns of the show. Right, right. They got enough clowns right now these days as it is. Anyway, between Damien and Sandow, and you Time go on down the list. My oh, God, yeah. all of them. I know, are I know. Phony, goofy Ryder, comedy. Ryder, when he's used oh, Fondango. Exactly, Fondango, oh, Adam Rowe. You go down the list, both Dallas. There's right. comedy everywhere. So many. It's not like we need our comedy. it's not good relief. comedy, man. That's it's, the it's, point. If it was funny and it worked. Yeah. Like. Crash Holly in the Attitude Era, thinking right. he's a big guy carrying a scale around, twenty four right. seven hardcore. Right. Or even like uh, Eugene, I thought yeah. that was funny. When, yeah. Or fucking God bless Santino Morello, funniest some bitch ever. I I think comedy Santino's characters great man. If you comedy look at the great. history of comedy characters, and if I was still writing columns, this would probably spark like, an idea that I'd have to write about. Santino Morella deserves a lot of respect. Absolutely. To be able to be a comedic figure in pro wrestling, especially WWE. And get over like And get it over, yeah. and it be legitimately funny. Not just funny to the six-year-olds watching mm -hmm. WWE, and this is our comic relief. I mean, he had me cracking up. He was good, man. Almost, at least once every time his face was on camera. He was good, Something man. made me snicker. Right, right, you know? right. So, but yeah, there's a million things that these New Day guys could be doing, and it's not like there's so, so it's, much it's competition like you said, on the it's roster. It's stereotypical yeah. black man. Well, the last, latest point I was making was the Attitude Era, and it would be hard to squeeze them in. I can understand if this is all they had for them then because it was so competitive. Right. There ain't, nobody's doing anything on this roster. I mean, right. there's a few standouts. There's Bray Wyatt, there's Seth Rollins, there's Dean Ambrose. Well, and then everybody else is pretty much, you know, whatever. Out, I mean, so they could really give him a chance to be something legitimate, and if it doesn't work, then maybe turn it into a comedy. You just listed, you know, Bo Dallas, Fandango, Adam, Adam Rose, Rose, the primetime players, all these guys. And it's comedy that's just... Bad. Damien uh, Sandow, you throw it all in there. You know? Uh, and Damien Sandow comes out, cuts that promo last week. What happened to him this week? Where was he? I don't know, but I don't like his new character He's anyway. Damien. I know he was right. one of my characters. No. All right, so the idea here was can Roman Reigns and Randy Orton get along and they during this match yeah. because in two weeks from now at Payback, they're going to be in a yes. three-way. Can they coexist knowing they're going to fight over the same belt? It'll be a four-way, but right. So anyway, um, they did wind up picking up the uh, the win, uh, but they teased tension between the two of them. Yeah. This is where Kane came out and basically announced that later in the night, as the main event... Well, it was going to be Randy Orton against Day, Roman though. Reigns. Uh, no, I, I think... Uh, they were celebrating all night backstage. 
Oh, you're right. You're right. Mm. Ro- uh, Reigns went to uh, to spear Kobe Kingston. My bad. My bad. Mm. And, uh, uh, and, and missed him. And missed him. And, him Orton and uh, got a Orton instead. So yeah. they got the win there. They Kobe. Yeah. Right, right. And then backstage, they were celebrating All throughout night the night. Right. Anytime you try to go to a backstage segment. It's a new segment. day, new day. Well, yeah, even if they weren't in the segment, they would be walking backstage. Right. And all of a sudden, it became, oh, they're still you're going right. and celebrating. You're right. So because Roman Reigns and Randy Orton. Say, guys, because you're right. Ran, because Ah, you're right, I'm wrong, all right? Jesus. You're like, if we got my boss on the air and we brought up the boxing bet from this past day, why would you bet against me in boxing or MMA? Why do it? I didn't bet against you I in said boxing. if we had my boss on the air. No. Anyway. You're not my boss. Yeah. Uh-uh. I used to be. I'm your boss of this and show. I used to be yours for a lot longer than you were mine. Oh, so me. Oh, shit, dude. So anyway, <laughs> Kane comes out. It's Roman Reigns against Randy Orton. Now I'm thinking, Good. Roman Reigns and Randy Orton? That's a pay-per-view main event right there. Yeah. Give it away for free on Raw. Screw it, right? It was, Fuck it. Roman Reigns and Randy Orton was the co-main event. Gotta get those ratings, right? Yeah. Why not? Give away a huge main event. Ratings come out the next day, 2.6. Was it Royal Rumble or SummerSlam? They were the main. They were the co-main event. It was the one that Ronda Rousey was in attendance for. Reigns and Orton? Or no, they had. They were uh, on WrestleMania last year against each other. Reigns and Orton. Reigns and Orton. Or no, it was SummerSlam. Journey to SummerSlam. I'm picturing that documentary. All right. It was Ronda so, versus Ambrose and then Reigns versus Orton. All right, so we go to commercial break. Yeah, uh, I want to get something in. I know we're rushing. Yes. Real quick. Yes. Clean, though. Yes. For the longest time, it was, why won't this guy retire? He's boring. Nobody gives a shit about him. He's so fucking blah. When I he think Kane's on fire these days. He started in Albany with us watching. Yeah. That one promo had everybody like, wow, he's still got some fire in the belly, you know? Right. Last two weeks since then... He's still swinging and hitting that. Well, I like the Kane Rollins thing that's ongoing yeah. right now, where it's, such a setup. <laughs> it's clearly a Kane's setup. Really got eventually, his back in the yeah. eventually, they're gonna do Kane and Seth Rollins. I don't think so, man. Yeah, I, I think, think I think it's a big fake, and then if it stays getting over the way it's getting over, they change their plan, they change it, and, and go make Kane, Kane do the that. baby face because that's the Seth obvious Rollins route Rollins. they're going, and because it's so obvious. Usually that means, oh no, he looks like he's fucking with Rollins, making shit hard on him. But in the end, he'll always save him and make sure he's still the champion. Something like that. What's best for business? This exactly. and the other thing. Yeah. All right, we had uh, Tyson Kidd and Cesaro defeated the Ascension. The Ascension, man. Well, God, the I Ascension know you're rushing, was but so over in NXT, man. You they just were passed so right back over your right I'm back, trying, in room, man. I thought oh you wanted to God, talk about you're that. Right. You're right. I know we're rushing, but no, I wasn't. You know what I'm doing? You know what I'm doing? I'm doing the matches. Yeah, the bowl and parts. anything in between, yeah. but. Because I wanted to talk about it. You're right. Yeah. Do we have enough Ryback. time? Let's save that then. Yeah. All right. We'll come back. We need to talk about Ryback because Boone came in last I night. And I know it was only one night and one promo. This, that, and the other. So I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say that you're completely sold on him because you're not. I mean, it's all I one see what night. you see now. Right. We'll get right. into that after that. I've been praising yeah. Ryback I for a while and Boone came in. So You got right. a good actor talent, kid. <laughs> I remember the Edge thing. I remember, there was another guy, guys, <coughs> Riley. You've always loved, but there's a couple guys. You're like, I'm telling you, and I never saw it. We got this one minute, like the king of it. Yeah, go ahead. We got one minute for the Ascension, and that's, that's about all, all they had. Yeah, that's all there was. Raw last night. The Ascension were so over in NXT, dude. They were so over, and then they get called up to the main roster. You've got. JBL yeah. on commentary is relentless. We've covered that. And granted, last night, even the announcers last night, they weren't as hard on the Ascension. It's too late. That they have been. They weren't as hard. It's I get too late. it. They I get their it. ass from here it's to Kingdom Come. It's too late. It's too late. They done buried them. Yeah. Completely jobbed them out. And once again, last night, they wound up losing to Tyson Kidd and Cesaro. And the cool thing in that match was Cesaro. Not only did he have the Cesaro swing, but oh, he had the back and forth with the corner. And the elbow yeah. it. That's into the corner true. elbow, into the corner elbow, into the corner elbow, into the corner elbow, into the corner And when corner the crowd, elbow, when the crowd goes, whoop, boom, yeah. whoop, boom, you know what I mean? That's got to awesome. be a new spot for him. Only that one's going to blow him up like crazy. Yeah, but they did the spin it. thing, and then they dropped it, you know? Yeah. So now they've got that. Maybe but it looks like they're turning Kid and Cesaro baby face now. It looks like it. So right. the, those are backstage. two moves you're going to want in your repertoire. They like had a backstage guy. segment later in the night yeah. with Italian. And it wasn't with Burger King chicken fries this time. They actually did some fucking... Some TV for a change. Speaking of Burger King. Oh, the Mayweather? 
Yeah, I can't believe you didn't mention that. that. Jimmy Kimmel was my thing. Jimmy Kimmel ju- dressed as uh, Justin Nobody got Bieber. the reference. For everybody watching, I'm sure you guys, because you're such diehard fans, but the, the reference from Jimmy Kimmel during the Mayweather you Pacquiao fight... You good diehard fans, you! Well, I'm just saying, like, I'm at a party watching the fight. Not one person there got it. You got it when I brought it up he to you. He did! Boone went to a party, yeah. man! Boone went to a party for he Mayweather. He had to babysit. He couldn't come. I had to babysit. Well, anyways, yeah, when Kimmel came up... With his eyebrows up and he's <laughs> bouncing like this and he's wearing the same exact... What he did was Mayweather brought Justin Bieber out for two of his fights. I believe it was Maidana and maybe maybe Marquez. I know Triple H. No, Triple H was Marquez. Mayweather's the... Or, but anyways, uh, he brought Bieber's Justin Bieber out fight. for two of his last most recent fights. And Justin Bieber wore the Run DMC black hat yeah. and the glasses and yeah. his eyebrows were up and he's hopping yeah. like this the whole way down the thing. So the second Pacquiao flashes up on the screen we see Kimmel back there <laughs> with his eyebrows <laughs> up, wearing the hat, wearing the whole outfit, and he comes watched, bouncing out the same way. I watched Jimmy Kimmel mm. last night, and he so explained. Fucking funny, man. I ex- uh, Jimmy Did he Kimmel it? last night explained the whole thing. He told uh, Pacquiao's always been on his show. They yep. do a bit yep. with Pacquiao he on the show. Sometimes, yeah. sometimes he sings, and he's always there with uh, Guillermo. Who's kind of a sidekick yep. there, and uh, he explained Ooh, that uh. when, the last time, a couple of weeks ago, when Pacquiao was there to promote the fight, he said, "Dude, I want to be in your corner." And Pacquiao said, "Or not corner, but I want to come out to the ring." Yeah. And Pacquiao said, "Let's do it, man." And then they came. They came to an agreement. That was and, a whole lot. Uh, the mock beat It was the know? whole thing. And Kimmel said, "I never thought in a million years that Pacquiao would say, okay, yeah. come to the ring with me.'" And sure enough, Pacquiao said, let's do it. And uh, it's they, kind of uh, fucked up, isn't it, too? He only did it to do the joke. It wasn't like he was for like, the Bieber joke. Yeah, right? he didn't know, like, right. oh, I want to support my guest of so many that years. That was awesome. Like, oh, I want to awesome. shove it up Bieber's little fruity ass. Listen, yeah. this is what we're going to do. We're going to come back on the flip side. Alan Numero Dos, we're going to finish up Monday Night Raw. We're going to kick it off with Ryback. Ryback's promo from last night. What would you guys think of Ryback's promo from Raw last night? Let us know in the uh, in the live chat room. We're also going to be taking your rapid fire questions. We're going to do Raw quick so we can get the rapid fire. Bring up some of the big news over the past couple of weeks. I know we haven't been here. Vern Gagne, I know. Already talked about Mayweather and Pacquiao, but some of the bigger news that's kind of broke over the last uh, week or so. Uh, let us know in the rapid fire. I'm going to put that up during the commercial break. How can they submit rapid fire? It's fucking simple, man. You go to Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WGR. That's Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WGR. Once you get there, the top post will ask for your questions and comments for the rapid fire segment, which we will get to in hour number two. Please keep them brief because we got to read every word. Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WGR. You are listening to WCR TV Tuesdays you're with. Too. You're watching. You're listening. Matt Boom. Me. Ryan Clark. Him. We're back. Yes. But after this, yeah. we are. We need to finish up Monday Night Raw from our number one from last night. Um, we're also going to be taking your rapid fire questions and your live phone calls. We've got the live phone number here in just a little bit. I do want to take some you time. Let me the, uh, load it up. Yeah, I do want to take some time for uh, for the rapid fire tonight because it's been a lot of news. So we're going to finish up Monday Night Raw real quick. From, I'll let you uh, do it. Go ahead. From last night. Remind me if you get anything. Ryback right. still haven't touched on you. We're going to talk. We're going to jump right into it. So Ryback comes out last night, right? And a lot of you guys. I mean, listen. I understand why you're making fun of me. The, whenever I talk about Ryback's promos, right? I've come on here before, and I'll come on here, and I'll say it again tonight, and I'll try to explain myself like I always do without everybody rolling their eyes and jumping all over me the second I bring up the one reference that I always do. Because I think you guys get the reference that I'm trying to make a little bit wrong. You automatically think that I think that he's him, and I don't. He's who? So, Ryback comes out. Basically, what I've said is when Ryback cuts a promo, when they give him microphone time, I see the raspy voice, all right? I just see that raspy voice. And that's the only comparison that I really have. He's bald. Uh, and he's bald, but I'm not going he's for white. the look. I'm not going oh. I'm not going for the look. That's not what I'm looking for, right? You're looking for the sound, it's raspy not, voice. It's, it's the raspy voice. And when Ryback cuts a promo, the problem that I have with it is I think that whole feed me more thing needs to go. It's a scene that's what version I don't of Austin. Like, it's too cartoony. Yeah, it's cartoony. It's yeah. just... Too kiddish. You know, Childish. So when Ryback oh. comes out, and I just think that 
let's let's take Ryback and you have him come out and you just give him a free microphone and you have him just be a bad fucking ass. Just whether it be against authority like Austin was back in the day, you just have him be a bad ass with that raspy voice. And I really think he could be something. But instead he comes out and he says, Well I'm hungry and I'm I'm ready to eat and feed yeah. me more and he gets Feeding the crap. Time. And that is what kills it for me every time. Is it just that feed me more thing just comes across corny. But last yeah. night he comes out and he starts cutting this promo and I thought he was awesome. And the crowd starts shitting on it, right? Goldberg, the crowd The crowd starts doing the Goldberg thing and to Ryback's credit last night to his great credit. He went off script. Off script. And you could tell that he went off script with the crowd where he yes. even referenced the Goldberg chance, not by saying Gold Goldberg in Twice. particular. He tried to do a very nonchalant reference once, and it didn't work. It didn't work. It kept going, and then he said, "Fuck it, abandon script, fully address the crowd chance." And this is where I might be alone in my opinion. But when he got them to start chanting "Feed me more" instead of Goldberg, he right. went back into. If you remember, about two weeks ago, they had him do this big ten-minute fucking promo where he talked about. And the doctor said I would never wrestle right, again, right. and the injuries, and this and that. I, and I thought, thought that was a good promo, too. It was. But he said pretty much the same exact promo again once he got him to stop chanting Goldberg, start chanting Phoebe Moore. He, mm -hmm. Then he went into the same promo we've already heard, which I'm sitting here thinking, oh, God, somebody must have told him that was good, so now he's going to redo the whole fucking thing we've already heard. And then he started switching it a little bit. And that's why, Bray, I don't fear you. If I don't fear a doctor telling me I can't do what I love no more, why would I fear you? And this is not what he's saying, but this is what this is the but point he's he making. But didn't he seem like more? So of he a brought it back home. Didn't he seem like more of a badass? And then he got more. And then once he switched off the doctor stuff, he got more enthusiastic, more into it, more heart and determined and grit right. behind right. his words. And it seemed to me that from the second he switched off script from the Goldberg Goldberg chance to get him to stop doing that shit. And it worked. Mm -hmm. I think he kind of kept going because kept there was going. a key right. line he said at the end, which was something about you never. I'm paraphrasing, but he said you, you're never going to get anywhere in life unless you take chances. And he said the chances part was such enthusiasm that to me, I'm thinking. And it's funny because I was already thinking. To you, you're thinking he went off script. I'm already man. thinking he's off script. Right. From the Goldberg line on, and I'm like, I guarantee you he wasn't supposed to go straight from that into this fucking same mm -hmm. I'm injured doctor said I'll never wrestle again promo that he's already cut. So to me, I'm like, he's shooting right now. He's and taking then, a chance, and when he goes back, he brought right? it, and then he brought it back at the end yeah. with the comparing it to the Wyatt Fear stuff, and then to the. You never get nowhere unless you take a chance stuff. And then at the very end, it seemed like he got back on script and did whatever his last little thing was supposed to be. But it seemed like he was off for such a solid stretch of like two or three full minutes. Doesn't sound like much, but two or three full minutes time. It's, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of time. Especially with a mic and nobody re time. talking right. back to you. You're talking by yourself to a bunch of people right. in a microphone. He delivered it so well. There was so much passion in his voice. He had the right story point. Like it was a maybe, great maybe. piece of work, and I think I think a lot of it was him on the fly shooting, which to me backs up your claim in that he has verbal ability. He's got we haven't verbal. fully yeah. seen him reach his capabilities yet, but every once in a while, I remember back in the day when he was doing the comedy shit, he would be on commentary every once in a while, even on Twitter. Mm -hmm. You can see he's got a very strong personality, a very funny personality. He's quick on the, and on he's the quick witted, quick on the fly, and he's right? Good. Right, he's, quick witted. He's good right. at uh, uh, what's it? Uh, I'm not good at it because I can't think of the he's word. Quick on the fly, man. What's he's, Saturday Night Live's good? Improvise. He's improvise. good at improvising. Yeah. Right, right. But anyways, my point being, I saw for the first time last night what you've been talking about forever, which was that he has the potential. If they can harness it in the right way and give them the, like, don't make them a Steve Austin ripoff. You can't make do a ripoff. A that's Goldberg what ripoff. That's, that's He's what more I thought. He's a Goldberg ripoff than anything right now. He's a quiet killer. But as Goldberg wasn't to good on the mic. A quiet killer, just yeah. like Goldberg. Right. And he's bigger, just like Goldberg, whereas Austin was a little smaller. A much but better, better mic in the skills. ring and better mic skills. But I think he's like a mixture of those two. Dressed up like RVD with a bald head. <laughs> the singlet you know needs I mean? to go too. Yeah, the colorful the singlet, singlet. Give him singlet. some black fucking. Regular badass shorts, yes. some, some yes. MMA gloves. If, I think he wears if, those anyway. I agree. Yeah. If the singlet goes, if they get rid of the singlet, 
uh, if they let him come out there and be his self, which I think, like you said... Most guys wear this thing with to cover up their gut. Yeah. He's so fucking jacked. He's he can, jacked. Yeah, he don't need a shirt. I think, I think if the singlet goes, I think if the Feed Me More line, which is over... Get rid of the cheesy... Get, did you, what did you think of It's Feeding Time? Because I think he... I thought he improvised that at the end, almost like Stone Cold, he improvised his whole Austin King of the Ring speech, right? Went right, off script, right. did his own thing, took a chance. And look how old... And it looked like Ryback was doing that last night, and, I, and to me, after at the end, I'm like, and he punched it at the end with... Like, they always tell you, have a catchphrase in your back pocket. Right. Always have a line to say, in case you get the opportunity, yeah. tell them, kid, and they hand you the mic, and you're, like, sitting there frozen, like, holy shit, this isn't in the script, what do I do? Right. Always have something, something to say. Something that you can go to. And he seemed like he had that in his back pocket, and I'm he was just waiting for the opportunity, and because he had to shoot on the, cra- he had to acknowledge the Goldberg shit. Right. It wasn't going away, it, going it was away. loud as shit, he had to right. do something. Right. And from there on, I was under the impression that maybe not fully shooting, maybe not fully off script, but a lot of that seemed seem ad lib to me. Right. Including the line at the end where he modified his own catchphrase. I just and he's talking on all these metaphors about how hungry he is, and he closes with "It's feeding time." Right. I thought right. that was a decent line. I just I I I think that that you guys what you. You guys are picturing the Ryback that you see on TV. What Boone and I, or what I'm saying at least, is. Don't think about the Ryback you see on TV. A little bit. But think about tweaking what you see in yeah. the current Ryback now. Think about tweaking that just a little bit. Get rid of the singlet. Get rid of the Feed Me More. Have him cut a more badass promo. And I think that this dude could be something. He could be a big deal, man. I really think this dude could be a big deal if they give him the ball and run with it. Now, last night, he went off script a little bit, yeah. like you said. Are they going to like that, or are they going to say, wait a minute, you didn't follow a script? Hopefully they like it, because what he did last night came yeah. across a lot better than if he let the Goldberg chance can continue and, and did that. Just yeah. tweak Ryback a little bit, and I really think he could be a big deal. I don't man. know how big of a deal, though. You but you've got to tweak it. You can't take the Ryback that yeah. you see on television now and say, oh, Ryback sucks, Ryback, like a lot of you in the chat, Ryback sucks, he's terrible. Because you're looking at the Ryback right now. What I'm talking about is tweak that a little bit yeah. and let him... I don't know how big of a deal he can be because as long as we're comparing him to Austin, first of all, that's unfair because Austin's the biggest star in the history of the business. Yeah, I he's not going to be that. And Ryback's and nowhere complete, near Austin. And they're completely, completely different. And they're completely different size. At, yeah. And they're completely different personalities. So it's not fair to be like, well, he's not as much like Austin as Austin was. He's of not. He's not. He's not. a different guy. Of course. But not. if you do do some tweaks to his character and this and that, he has potential. And that's where Thank I'm you. drawing this off of, which is that. There's been a little moment here on commentary where he showed some, some right. humor mm-hmm. on Twitter. He shows humor all the time. And the interviews that he does with mainstream, he seems like a badass because he's so cranky and he doesn't fucking like doing it and this and that. And then he shows entertainment skills as far as his promos and stuff when he gets chances here and there. And then if you mix that with his ring work, he's a badass. So mix he could it be, all up, man. He could be a Goldberg that could talk a little bit. He'll never be Austin because Austin, A... Austin, Austin's Austin, different. Austin talks way better than him, and B, Austin, before he was stone cold, right. when he was stunning Steve, he was considered like the next Ric Flair. He was considered like the great worker of back, the company. Back back in the Austin, like before Austin was Steve Austin, which you guys know now, oh, that wasn't the same Austin from back in the day. You know what I mean? My point being related to Ryback, though, is that Ryback will never be the in-ring worker stone cold Steve Austin was. He'll never I, be I as agree. good. He's not I as agree. good a wrestler. I agree. He'll never be the talker stone cold Steve Austin was. Nope. There's very few who are. They're different people. They're very few who are. But he does have talent bigger than what they're doing with him right now. He's, That's all I was looking he for is, right there, He man. is capable of more than feed me more like a big fucking, you know... I agree. ...buffoon or something. I just... I see hey, potential man. there. And maybe a Steve Austin... When you guys hear me compare Ryback to Steve Austin, you automatically think that I'm thinking Ryback's the next Steve Austin. I don't even... I still that, don't man. understand the comparisons, but I, I, uh, it's I just see the, talent. It's, it's the raspy voice and the way that he cuts and his he's promos. Tall, and he's got a good yeah. team. It's yeah. not that. It's not the look. Of course it's it just is. the way that he cuts promos. It's not... It's, it's really not. There's a million it's people... Like, Shawn Michaels has a raspy voice. Why doesn't he when I, Shawn When Michaels? I hear Ryback talk... <laughs> I, when I hear Ryback talk, when yeah. I hear him grab the microphone, I just... I hear a little bit of Austin in that voice. In that voice, I just I hear a little bit 
Oh, well, I don't know why. I still don't they, see uh, that, but. I don't know. That's what I hear in, in Ryback's voice when he cuts that promo. So, But it has nothing to do with the look. They're two completely different people, uh, co- completely different styles. Um, in the ring, so, on the mic, yeah, completely So it's not that I'm saying Ryback's the next. Oh, I'm not. I'm not. Clearly, he's not. He never will. You know? Be. He never will be. Nobody but will be. Nobody is ever going to be Austin. Nobody's yeah, no. going to be The Rock. Nobody's no. going to be Hogan. Uh, Can we get a star as big as them? Maybe. <coughs> they won't just, be the same kind of star. I think Ryback, if you let him be a little bit more of himself, yeah. drop the singlet, drop the beat me more, have him come out and be a badass, I think he could be a... Everybody on the roster, if you let them be themselves a little bit more, would be better off for it. Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. you need proof of that. Look at the fucking, the new generation WWE versus the Attitude Era WWE. Right. The second they stop being, here's your gimmick, and then here, just be yourself, and then just turn the volume up. It was night and day as far as quality of the product and success of the product. I right. Mean, it worked a lot better. What'd you think of uh, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins? I thought that was an amazing Not match. last night. Gave it about 15 yeah, minutes, too, man. Great that match. was awesome, Because it man. followed right up after the Ryback. Because you didn't even mention Bray Wyatt cut in at the end of, of Ryback. Bray Wyatt did come in on the uh, And he did great, too. I thought that whole segment from Ryback at the beginning with the promo yeah. all the way to the end of the Wyatt thing. I was, and then right. I, I was like, that's a great little piece of business they just did right, right there. Like, that was I thought uh, Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins had a great match. Even the crowd at that point. Match. Holy shit, yes. chance. And, they uh, were way into awesome. it, by the end, yeah. They were also awesome. a couple of dives to the outside by Ambrose. Great match. That was that was great. Uh, we had Rusev defeated uh, Fandango. Fandango kind of getting a little bit of push, man. We've seen him well, on, on Raw. More about Lana, because if you remember outside the ring, Fandango right. had Lana doing the Fandangoing dance. Right, right, right. She had the big smile on her face. Like you never see her smile unless she's doing that "fuck you" smile. Like right. we're better than America, <laughs> and then she smiles. Oh, she's so pretty. But, but this is all. This was personality lead, smiling. This is all to lead to listen clearly. Well, on you get the scoop here. Go ahead. Clearly, Lana on television is becoming frustrated with Rusev, right? Yes. Rusev's down-talking her. He's treating her like trash, yes. this, that, and the other thing. I'm sure Jackie's going to get into this when she calls. But Sending her to the back. But Rusev's just, get out of here, yeah. go to the back, get away. I don't I don't want you, you cost around me. me. Match. I don't trust you anymore. So, clearly, Lana's eventually going to become frustrated enough where she says, you know what, Rusev, fuck you. How about a payback? And at payback, yeah. we've got an I quit match. And the way or the rumored plans... All right, right now, listen, John Cena, he's not going to lose that title. All right, that's number one. So, because John's... This is the final chapter, so because, done after this. Because Cena's not going to lose that title, Rusev's going to wind up quitting. Rusev says, I quit. And the theory behind this is, Lana says, you know what? I quit, too. Fuck you. So, it's you quit. Actually. You quit. You quit yeah. to John Cena. And you know what? I quit, too, because of the way you've been treating me week after week. So... That's two I know in one night. Here. I quit, and Lana quits, and Rusev just has a terrible mind. I know what you're trying to say, because we've talked about it a few times. To explain it a little better to the audience, you're basically saying, at Payback, it's an I quit match between Rusev and John Cena, and Lana is going to quit Rusev in the sense that she's going to dump him almost. Dump him. I, like, uh, black girls say it sometimes to their boyfriend, I'm going to quit you. <laughs> right. And go, you know, that work. Right. I'm going to quit you, you know, like that kind of shit. You're thinking that's what's going to happen. Today, I heard a rumor that it's a little different. It's almost more like the build-up to WrestleMania. If you remember, Cena didn't couldn't get a match with Rusev. The only way he got it was that Lana basically, because he was in the STF, Rusev was, and he couldn't get out. Lana gave up for him and said, fine, you got your match. I, you know, I quit. But blah, blah, blah. I think that's going to happen on Sunday. She quits on behalf of Rusev. It's an I quit match, so Rusev won't quit. But Lana will quit for him. Exactly. Lana throws in the towel. Parnell. Give him some credit. Parnell. Well, I said it before, him, but I'll give him right. some credit. Yeah. Well, he's just basically agreeing. Yeah. With you. Right. I was right. trying to explain it because I know what you're trying to say because we've talked right. about it a few times. But basically, she's gonna throw in the him. towel. She's gonna cost him the match, and it's gonna that's gonna lead to them breaking up. Right. And it gets him out of the feud too because it's an I quit match. And he doesn't have to lose clean he to John Cena. Clean. Although he does. did lose clean this past weekend at a house show, first he time did. ever. He did. Ever. But if if you think about it like this, if I Lana, think. if Parnelli oh, in the chat room, stuff, let's go with Parnelli in the chat room. Lana throws in the towel for Rusev. Yeah. That way, 
Rusev doesn't have to take the pin. The she one gets on the mic and says, we quit. Yeah. She throws in the towel, yeah. or she, she gets on the microphone and says, we quit. And Rusev says, what do you mean we quit? Oh, yeah. The next night, that, that's when we get our big breakup. That gets rid of Lana yeah. with Rusev. And, and the fans don't like her so bad. And John Cena retains the title at Payback without Rusev having to take the one, two, three. Exactly. They don't want a job. Rusev already lost at Extreme Rules. Uh, he won at WrestleMania, and then he lost at Extreme Rules. So it's kind of one and one right now. Did he right win at now. WrestleMania? He won at WrestleMania. It's one and one. Rusev? It's one and one. Cena beat him at WrestleMania. Lana cost him the match. Remember, her shoe came off and all that. She was on the ground hurt, and Rusev was pissed because she cost him the match. So th- Rusev won at Extreme Rusev Rules. hasn't won No, anything. he hasn't. He yeah. hasn't. No, is this the fourth match or the yeah, third match? Yeah, fourth. Fourth. There well, was he one won the first. Mania. He won the one before Rusev Mania. won the first. Yeah. Rusev before Mania, he won that Rusev one. Rusev definitely beat Cena once. And then the second time at WrestleMania, you're right. Cena won yeah. there. And then Cena won at Extreme Rules. With the chain. With the chain. Yeah. So Cena's going to win again here? This is it. Right. So they Cena wins the again final here. chapter. Right. And real quick, the scoop I was assuming you were going to give him was that WWE has big plans. Vince McMahon specifically. Has Fast big plans. Lane. Fast lane, you're right. In the uh, in yeah, the that was the one he won. Right. Uh, has big plans for Lana. Lana. He's going to change her name most likely mm-hmm. to CJ. Uh, the reason we heard was because well, that's her real name, right? Well, her name's Catherine J- something, but it, uh-huh. the initials are CJ. Yeah, and the idea is that Pamela Anderson's character on Baywatch, Baywatch was right. CJ. Do you think they drop her accent? Yes. You do. I think they phase it down. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Like maybe she's all talking, right. and all of a sudden she slips and sounds normal. Like whoa. You Jackie, to address it. But we're going yeah, to open the, the idea, phone lines for you in a little bit so that you can talk about it. The that. idea, we still haven't got to it. I thought you had this. That They want to make her the new Sable. They want to make her the new female face she of the there. company. She could turn her baby face, splitting her from Rusev, changing her name, right. building a whole fucking she's our woman of the company. Sounds like that's what they're going to do. That's the same, yeah. yeah. And it, it builds up a great Stephanie Lana match if you want to get there because Stephanie's the ultimate heel. Mm-hmm. Lana is the ultimate heel too, so we got to see if she works as a baby face. Right. The right. only reason she's so over is because that Russian thing she does is so convincing it and is. so it good. Is. Right. So good in that role. We had uh, Stardust <laughs> defeated uh, R-Truth. Nothing much there. Uh, well, his new thing uh, is that he's got a thing full of spiders. Okay. Spiders and then yeah. it was a bunch of fake spiders. Yeah, he opened ones. up the bag. Yeah. He opened up the bag and That's a bunch of fake now. rubber brings, spiders. They, they came out. with right. the snake. He brings spiders right. in a bag now. All right, so we had John Cena comes out, cuts a standard Raw promo that he does every week. Right, same old John Cena oh, promo. Hyping up the I Quit match. Hypes up the I Quit yeah. match with Rusev, and then basically says that with all that being said, what about tonight? Uh, the U.S. Open Challenge yeah. just starts right now. So. That brings out Bret Hart. Yes, crowd it does. Pops huge. Well, the music course, hits. You don't think it's Bret. You think it's going to be because the rumor was Heath Slater. Well, we think. Well, the right. rumor was Heath Slater's going to never leave Cena alone. He's going to challenge him week after week after week after week. I right. I know what time it is. I can't talk. Why do you bring that up? Know. All I do, all I do, is go like I that. They don't even words. see that. They don't even see that. Here. Me. They don't even see that here. Here, watch. You get into a big story. You're passionate. I'm no, gonna I'm trying to get the rapid fire. And get, we're talking about started. we're talking about Stardust and our truth. We're getting into that. With fuck all that. I'm going to skip it. He's not even listening. He's not even listening. We were talking about Bret Hart, and we were talking about Sami Zayn and yes, John Cena. Yes, before this, before this, I said Stardust defeated Archer. Move on. Yeah. Nobody care. Oh, uh, the spiders. Well, I had to. Uh, no, we're trying to get. You we're trying wrong. to get Go to ahead. rapid fire. Go ahead. Let me finish up Raw. Let me finish up Raw. Please do. So, oh. Bret Hart's music hits. Right, John Cena says U.S. Open Challenge is up next. Bret Hart's music hits. Bret comes out, basically says, "I mean, crowd pops, fucking." You, see, I don't, I don't yeah. go that far. Oh, two words into my I speech. point. I point yeah. one time, and that's it. But Bret Hart comes out, uh, comes out with music. Uh, Bret Hart's music hits. Crowd fucking pops huge. They, they of course, Bret's not going to wrestle tonight. I mean, give me a break, dude. Guy was in a motorcycle accident back in the day. Uh, comes out, basically says, in a "Bike accident, motorcycle accident." He's riding a bicycle and he fucking wrecked it and he got a stroke. It's a big difference between a motorcycle and a bicycle, bro. Bret Hart comes out, basically says, I got somebody that I want to in- introduce. Big difference. Great wrestler, uh, NXT star Sami Zayn yeah. winds up coming out to the ring. Crowd pops huge for Sami Zayn. Give it up for WWE. If you're going to have a guy on their debut night, if you're going to have him job out to a guy... Have it be, number one, John Cena. Number two, give him a match, which is 10, 15 minutes 
where he goes. I mean, you're against the top showcase guy. Showcase a little bit. Showcase him, man. You're against the top guy like John Cena, right? So number one, you're getting in the rub from John. Yeah. Number two, you give him a good amount of time against him. You job him out, but the fact is, he went against John Cena, dude. He went against the top guy, and if you're gonna if you're gonna lose, why not be why not be to a guy like John Cena? And they had the fortunate thing of the injury, which is it became part of the match. They stopped the match and had a doctor look at him for like a full minute, and Cena's just standing there like, "When are we fighting?" Did you think that was legit it when was. the doctor came out? I, no, what it was when we were watching it. I did. I was, did you? Well, I did, and then as the match kept going on, it was such a thing that they wouldn't shut up about him. They like, would, oh, yeah, so yeah. Zayn's gimmick's going to be like, he's always hurt, but he always finds a way to fight through it. Right, Which that's what like, I was thinking. I thought that's it was a character was trait they were building, but as it turns out, he injured himself before the it match. Was hurt. Which it was sucked, hurt. because on commentary, he's being made fun of. Oh, he's injury prone. His first <laughs> pass is, I'm like, guys, it was That's right. JBL all the time. That's Vince and JBL's ear. Right, 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 right. But, but right. to me, it's like, guys, you, you just got like a gift that you didn't even book. You got doctors checking on this guy, this new guy that's fighting the biggest name in the company, and he won't quit. And he's still going. And it turns out he's really injured. So actually, <laughs> the believability you get out of it, even though you think it's fake the whole time it's happening, mm -hmm. if the announcers would sell it as opposed to, wow, what a pussy, he's injury prone, this and that. Right. They would have went the other way and said, God, this guy's hurt and he still won't quit. He still works. It's his first right. match. He's against the biggest name of the last 15 years and he's saying, fuck that. I'm not quitting until I beat this man. And if they would have went that way, it would have worked 10 times better because it's like, wow, this son of a bitch has heart for days. Instead, they flipped it and almost did an ascension with him. Oh, he's injury prone. He says, here's his no. first night, he's already hurt. Well, granted, the guys, granted, they came back around at the end yeah. and said, what a debut for Sami Zayn. And yeah, Zane Cena did a great right. job of putting him over. Talk about Left the, the ring to him. And, yeah, he did. Yeah. He did. Talk Crazy about where the, uh, where the injury happened, too. Well, man. it was, I mean, he was coming out and he was trying to get the crowd to cheer and this and that, and it's... Something he did there injured. I don't know exactly what happened. I think it was going like, yeah, yeah I'm here on Raw. And, yeah. and then that's where he got hurt because it was early in the match where, where the referee or the doctor came yes. in and said, yo, are you Very all right? Early, yeah. And he, he saw Sammy he's saying, yo, I'm good, I'm good. You know, Apparently I'm the ref threw the X up too, like before the match. See, I didn't see I that. I didn't either. Did you see that? Probably off camera because, you know, they got like 20 cameras to pick. Right, right. Dunn's right. probably like, no, 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 not camera three. We see the X on camera three. Go to camera four. <laughs> you know, we're going to keep going anyway. How about, uh, alright, last Tuesday night, they started it on Raw last week. We had the King of the Ring tournament, right? Yes. Had a couple of qualifying matches. We get to First round, everybody keeps saying qualifying. It was first round. Yeah, first round, right? It was they, so they ruined short. the whole. They ruined the right? whole idea. The whole idea of King of the Ring was when, well, <coughs> when I was a kid, when they brought it back. They had it in the 80s, they got rid of it. They brought it, was it back. It was a one night, right? It was a one night tournament. Right. And that was the whole idea. Brett's thing was, Hogan's gone, I'm the next guy taking over for Hogan. I want to usher in a new era where the emphasis on, is on wrestling, not the character. Right. Have a fucking tournament one night. King of the Ring was was idea? Well, he brought it back. Oh. They had, had they had King Harley Race, King Macho Man, Randy Savage. That's how I knew Sept around Jeopardy earlier. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, no, Brett was the, <laughs> after a couple years of it being gone. Brett was the one that convinced him to bring it back because he said, "Give me three matches in one night, a one night tournament." Right. I think it was Bam Bam Bigelow. Razor Ramon, Scott Hall, and Mr. Perfect Kurt Henning. So three different sizes, right. three different styles of in-ring worker, and he's like, I'm going to show the fans I can have a good match with this big fat guy, Bam Bam Bigelow, yeah. this big 6'6", six, six fucking muscle guy, Scott Hall. And a real quick athletic this, Kurt Henning. Exactly. Right. And I can have a great different match with all of them. Whereas right. Hogan, it's big boot, leg drop, right. punch, punch, hawking up. No matter who he's fighting. Not in 2015. Yeah, not anymore. <laughs> Although, well, he thinks in 2016 he's going to be Yeah, he's saying, he right? Thinks. He says so. Yeah, he thinks he's back See next year. See if he can pass the physical, right? I Get doubt it. Get out of here. But, uh, so anyway, they, they started last week on Raw, right? With, uh, the, what, what are we calling it? it Opening first round. First round matches, For, yeah. First round matches, And then they had right? the semifinals and finals live. Then they continued the following night on the yeah. network. I get what they're Two matches doing in that. one night. I get why they're doing that. They're trying to get people, all right, if you want to see the finish of the King of the Ring, you've got to... But that, that defeats, because there's no extra... That defeats yeah. the whole purpose, like you said, of one night. One night... But they're looking at it from just a network perspective. Yeah, they fucking tainted the King of the Ring concept, but from their perspective, we're already taping SmackDown. 
Yeah. So if there's no extra production costs. We can give a live event on the network. Why not try to get a couple without, of new like, book, Yeah, like with the NXT stuff, that whole event is built around the network that night, this and that. So oh, every right. penny of it goes into that. Right. This is something they're doing anyway. They're taping SmackDown the main event anyway. Right. Well, let's cut a little bit in the SmackDown and give an hour before no, and no, do no, it no, live on the network. Everybody's here. We don't have to do any extra production. Not only that, but you start it in front of four million people on Raw. And if you plug it the next night, four million people watching Raw, yeah. you know that out of those four million, at least a couple of them are going to sign up to the network to see... And it was still part of the free month, I believe. April was free, right? Uh, May is free. I thought April was free. No, they just announced that May is free. I thought the month after WrestleMania was... I thought they're doing another one for May now. I think you had the... I think you had the pay... No... Or April. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, because WrestleMania month, was in March. March, and then the next one was going to be free. Are you right? sure April was free? Maybe it was February was free, and now this is the next Might have been February free, and then, yeah. But but I know May is free. Yeah. They announced May is going to be free. I know that, yeah. But anyway, so... The original plan was to spread the King of the Ring across a few weeks. On right, the right, yeah. right, right. So the whole idea is, all right, you've got four million people or whatever tuning into Raw... The following night, you know that a couple of those four million yes. people are going to sign up because they want to see who's going to be king of the ring. They can't wait until next Monday or even SmackDown on Thursday and to plus find they out. They coupled that with like, all right, Monday we got the debut of the Jerry Springer. Tuesday they had something I forget what it was. They had everything last week. Or Renee Tuesday Young. was king of the ring. Wednesday I forget what they had. Thursday was the Stephanie Jericho podcast. Renee like, Young was Wednesday. I think. But that was like a ten minute thing. But, yeah, but yeah. I'm talking about like big specials. The Jericho right. Stephanie thing. We watched it live. Yeah, yeah. Uh, unless it was taped. We watched. What it did when you it debuted. think of that, man? I th- I thought it was a lot more scripted mm. and sucky, kissy, assy than dude, the Austin one. It was, yeah. man. It was. I mean, dude. Uh, listen, I get. By the way, Jericho's going to be coming back uh, for WWE live events. Um, put oh, that up last Cena. night. I was going to say, who was Jericho's first one? Yeah, was, no, I know. He, Vince McMahon number one, or no, no Jericho's Jericho. first one was Cena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Austin did Vince, and Austin did Triple H, and then Jericho did Cena, and Jericho did Steph. This is his second Jericho part? Remember, he did Cena. That was his first one. It was going to be Austin the night after me. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Not all that long ago, either. Yeah. Not all that long ago. Right. All right. Um, so, it, it was. It came across as so scripted. It was very it, cheesy, it was, yeah. Uh, I mean... Like I told you during the thing, it was still cool to see Stephanie talking out of character. Cause she's right. so in that character for the last right. several years. A lot of makeup. Yeah. She's still hot as shit, man. Her eyes she are is so hot, dude. Her I'm eyes not are saying so she pretty, is. man. I was watching she is that, and, and, they're, and they're right up on her fucking face. And I'm like, she is hot. Damn, she, she is, got some pretty eyes. She is hot, dude. What do you think about uh, uh, Bad News Barrett? Uh, he's pretty cute. King Barrett. Oh, what about He's pretty cute. I, was, I said he's pretty too. Uh, <laughs> what about? Uh, it was him and him winning. Don't you think? Listen, I know I think they're one. I mean, Neville's a new guy from yeah. NXT. The crowd's already hot. I just don't think Neville has the look. No, and he can't there's talk. There's something. There's something missing he with him. He can't Neville. talk. Put him with Heyman. Where's Heyman? That's a great idea. Where's he's, Heyman? Any, they could do a whole stable with Neville, Zane, and, and all these new I guys. That, why but Heyman we, headed up. Why do we have Heyman on Raw right now, dude? You know what I mean? I get it. Brock Lesnar's not there. But why when Brock Lesnar is not there? Yeah. Paul Heyman was the highlight of Raw every fucking week for you. Verbally, absolutely. Was he not? Absolutely. Paul Heyman. So when Brock Lesnar is not there, why not have Heyman with one more guy? Cause Who's there for Now, if he has another guy, that's one thing. If he doesn't have another guy and he's just Lesnar's guy, the reason not to have him there is because you don't want to keep drawing attention to the fact that this True. big star is not here. True. It's almost like underscoring the fact that, hey, you, Brock's here, but not for you guys. He'll True. be here in a couple months for these other guys. But if you give him somebody else, then, yeah, he's got a purpose. Now, right. what might be shining away from that is they gave him somebody they thought was an up-and-comer, Curtis Axel. Right. And absolutely nothing happened. And it failed, right. But that right. was their booking that fault, was their booking, not him. Right. Heyman did right. what he could with what they gave him with that situation. Right, right. I mean, nine times out of ten, his job was to pretty much ignore Axel and put over Brock while Axel stood next to him like a douchebag. Right, right. Like the unloved son. Yeah, but you're you know. Curtis Axel. That's a bad choice. Yeah, I know. But no, right. uh, Triple H was supposedly really high on him, like really thought he was going to be a big deal. Axel? Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, all right, so main event of Raw, we had Roman Reigns, Randy Orton... Randy Orton, 
Roman Reigns, one on one. Fucking melee at the end there, but uh, went a little bit overboard last night with uh, interferences well, and stuff. With interferences yeah. and then the overrun as well too. Man. Yeah, it, went, it went a little long. Yeah, went yeah. a little bit long. Um, uh, Rollins uh, towards the end. Uh, Rollins uh, well, quick, put Reigns into the ring. What's the up? whole stipulation in this, which they added later on, or was that earlier in the night? Where where do we add Ambrose to this match? Because that's that's the whole thing of the night. No, it was a one on one match. Oh, you're talking about yeah, it. Where did Ambrose get added to the match? It was Randy Orton. Or no, it was Dean Ambrose versus Seth Rollins. The match Rollins. against Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. That we mentioned earlier. Ambrose, yeah, we didn't even mention the stipulation. If See? Dean Ambrose... Well, we, did, I, it. We, we, we skipped through it. It was yeah. Dean Ambrose against Seth Rollins, which we both agreed was a very good match. Yes. Uh, I forgot that that was the stipulation. Kane had announced yeah. earlier in the night that there was a stipulation added yes. to that match. That if Dean Ambrose defeated Seth Rollins... Yeah. Dean would be added into the WWE Payback ma- main event, yeah. so it would be a fatal four-way. For the title, yeah. Dean wound up stealing it towards won, the end yeah. and, uh, and and got added to and the And then this uh, was the, the main, main event, event, and before they all come out, and then before the bell rings, Kane, Seth Rollins, J&J Security, all of them come out, and then Noble gets on the announce table and tries announcing. Like, Noble is awesome. He screwed up so bad, too, know, man. This guy's the timekeeper. This guy's the bell keeper. <laughs> like, that's not even a thing. Like, this guy's going to be your special guest commentate. Right. And he didn't say, like, he screwed that up. Instead of saying commentator right. or commentary, he's like, your special guest commentate. I forget what it was, but he screwed up. <laughs> that might not have been the exact wording, but he screwed up, like, two or three things there in the announce. JBL was fucking with him so bad he was while he was doing it. But anyways, yeah, so each guy in the authority had a different role, which ended up meaning pretty much nothing in the end. Well, all the guys came out, it was basically a because they all fuck, like yeah, exactly. Said. And they all hit their finisher, right? Exactly. The, uh, Dean Ambrose hit the Dirty Deeds on, well, he, on he, Randy Orton. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Randy Orton hit the RKO on Roman Reigns. We had... Uh, and then, 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 no, there, there was no finish to the match. No finish. It was just a bunch of bullshit and rolling off the air. It was all four guys yeah. in the main event at Payback all... But it wasn't a go-home show, so it was kind of like, why? I know, it was you weird. Could've, you could have ended with something that could have had an ending to it, you know, as opposed to just, oh, all hell breaks loose. See you next week. So that was Monday Night Raw from last night. We're going to go a little bit long tonight. Uh, we, I mean, it's been a couple of weeks since we've been here. I know the time. The time. No. <laughs> Fuck you, no, dude. No, it's cold. Um, couple... I didn't know if you wanted me to look okay, it up. I was think? trying to do it off air. So you nah, I know. What do you think, though? We got enough rapid fire, probably, is what I think. Uh, I know. How about Jackie? We'll get Jackie. All right. We got to talk to Jackie. You Jackie's like talking to Jackie. Him. I know. All right. All right. There's 17. Can we do rapid fire quick? We can try. Fire. All right. Let's do it. All right. Uh, live phone lines. We're only going to take a couple of these because we do want to get to uh, rapid fire tonight. We don't want to leave everybody out. So we'll take a couple live phone calls. And we'll get the rapid fire. We'll start it up while the phone lines are loading. Uh, I'll start it up. Uh, Matt Johnson just finished watching the ESPN WWE special. It's a must-see. Nice. Very well done and emotional. By the way, no question, but enjoy the NXT live show. Guarantee you'll have a blast. Better than Raw or SmackDown. Talking about the NXT show. Talking right? about uh, in yeah. Albany, and uh, we need to check out the... Uh, the uh, ESPN special. I'm so. gonna. I didn't need to be told that one. Definitely. I'm checking that. Me too. Me too. Anthony Remy says. Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> is Sami Zayn injury a serious injury that will keep him out for a few months? MRI uh, today. Yeah, we don't have results back from that yet, right? MRI today. Going to get more details on uh, on that, and we'll put it up on the uh, on the website when we do. Caller, you. We get a call. You're good. Caller, you're live on WZR TV. What's up? Yeah, there's a few things uh, that, I, that I want to get to, guys. Uh, first, the idea with Rusev, wouldn't that do more to turn Rusev babyface than Lana? No. Another thing, another thing, it's about it's something I've been thinking about lately. But they're trying to paint Roman Re- guys like Roman Reigns, John Cena, and Ryback as underdogs. How are we supposed to believe that they're underdogs? Look at their physique. How are we supposed to, supposed to believe that things have paid harder for them? Uh, I mean, John, John Cena's not really an underdog. Uh, I didn't even hear the second part. The first part, though, they're no. That all, what they're doing is turning Lana a babyface, not Rusev. Rusev is yeah. being a typical heel, taking his hot chicken. You get back there. Nobody wants to see you. Right. Of course, everybody. We uh, want Rus- Lana as the chance. So. Rusev is definitely the heel here, and then Lana's gonna get fed up and uh, turn babyface eventually. Turn, yeah. Speaking of Rusev and Lana, yes. our good friend Jacqueline. Jacqueline Harder, live, baby, live. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. you're live, Hello, Jacqueline. Boy. What's up? How you doing? 
I've been I'm I'm doing okay. I've been listening to what you guys are, have been saying, and Lana is no stable. Stable, stable. Lana is Lana. Uh oh. Oh man, and I screwed up comparing the two, huh? Uh-oh. I just meant she's going to get the sable role where she's not just going to be a typical diva. She's going to be a diva that matters. They want, they think she can make a difference in the ratings and stuff. Yeah, but, but anyway. you, you see, I remember the days of sable, and uh, I remember her walking out. And I'm like, okay, you know what? If you're going to leave, then leave. You know what? You're, you're turning your back on your whole company. And that was when I was starting to really like Stephanie when she came in. So I'm like, okay, when I'm starting to hear this stuff, okay, all right. Lana is no stable. Stable is just someone who what and got married to an ex USC guy. Lana is a girl that is well respected by everybody, including me, who has a guy that loves her. And I'm the stuff about them breaking up on screen is just driving me nuts. Well, I mean, it doesn't I mean, break up. Listen, this is this is storyline. By the way, real I quick, mean, Sable didn't walk out. She had a a uh, sexual harassment lawsuit. That's what it was, and it was a that's giant true. thing. But yeah, listen, <laughs> listen, Jackie, I don't, I don't, yeah, listen. Well, that was after the Ru- Rusev and Lana are gonna go home. They they just bought a house down in Tennessee in Nashville or something like that. They're gonna go home, which Nashville. you see on television. Which you see on television is gonna be a breakup, and and they're gonna be fine. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't, don't want to. I don't want to. I don't want to. Yeah. You know, there's storyline and there's real life. You know what I mean? So this is this is storyline, and they'll let it play out on television. Lana, you're probably gonna see Lana get a major baby face push. She's gonna. To turn into a, a good chick. We'll see if she uh, if she wrestles or not. Rusev's going to continue to be a heel. You're going to bolt. You're going to see them both on Raw and SmackDown on a weekly basis. They're just not going to be together. But what happens outside of television? I don't think that's going to change. I think you know the Rusev <laughs> after Raw and SmackDown. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll see what happens. It very well could, but we'll see what happens. You know what I, I mean? I I I know that. It's just that you know when I first saw them, I'm like, okay. When I first saw them, I'm like, okay, this is, okay, I never got the chance to see with Randy or meet them, so hopefully I get to meet them and see them, and I haven't yet. You'll be able to meet them. You'll be able to meet them. Don't worry about it. I'm sure they're going to appear at Comic-Con and everything else together. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. you got to let it play out on television. We'll see what happens. You know what I mean? It's going to be all good, Jackie. Did you guys, did you guys see them when you guys went to Raw? Yeah, yeah, we saw them when we went to Raw. They uh, they came out together, and uh, it was a good time. We had a good time at Raw, you know? Jacob had fun. I, I believe it. Well, listen, let's see what happens next week, all right? We'll, we'll continue to follow it. We'll see what happens next week on Raw. We'll see what happens at uh, SmackDown tonight. And, uh, we'll, you know, we'll see where it goes from here. you gotta, you got to let it play out, you know? I'm trying to. I just can't. I know. All right. All right. Have a good week, Jackie. Cheer up. Cheer up, honey. I will. Cheer up. I will. All right. Be good. I'll talk to you guys next week. All right. Be good. Be good. Oh, we love our Jackie. She, she, listen. She just started crying at the end. She is. She's crying, but she is passionate. I wasn't listening. Why was she, she is extra. She doesn't want Rusev and Lana oh, to split. Okay, okay. She is a passionate. WWE fan. You guys got to understand that in the chat. She is passionate about Rue Seven and Lana. She knows that together. Uh, she's passionate. And that's where I'll let you know what? There's people out there. There's kids. There's even grown ups that are out there that are passionate about WWE. <laughs> that, are, <laughs> that are passionate about <laughs> WWE. And they. they I wish. That I could be like that, all right? It's still real to her, damn it. <laughs> Carl, you're on the air. What's going on? What's on your mind? Uh, hey, guys. It's Stephen Kerbeek in the chat room. What's up, Stevie? Doing? How's it going, guys? What's um, on your mind? So, uh, would you, uh, A. Boone, uh, sorry, uh, Clark, would you uh, would you think about the Bills draft? Did you watch the uh, NFL draft last week? Uh, who did we draft, man? I watched, uh, I watched about the first 15 picks, and... Uh, I didn't see the rest of round one, I didn't see round two, and I didn't see round three, man. So I, I couldn't even tell you who we got, bruh. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we got like a uh, cornerback from uh, Florida State in the second round, cause obviously last year because of the Sammy Watkins you know, trade, we didn't get uh, – we didn't have a first-round pick. But uh, no doubt. it was a pretty good draft overall. But uh, Nice. Yeah. Nice. No yeah. doubt. Yeah, I, I, listen, we're going to be a good team, man. We're going to be a good team coming up this year. So we'll see what happens, man. All right. Yeah, bro. Appreciate. Oh, Oops. We didn't mean to cut him off. Sorry, Steven. Uh, you said all right. I hit the button. I'm trying to get to rapid fire and everything else. Uh, real quick. Uh, all right. Whoa. Let's do uh, some. Close this up. Let's do some rapid fire questions. Hmm? Let's Can you close this up. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. We're all. Uh, we we want to take. We don't want to miss everybody's rapid fire questions. So we're gonna get back to that. We took a couple live phone calls tonight. We'll uh, return to phone calls next week. It's been a busy week this 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 time around because we've missed the last uh, couple of weeks. Uh, Mike Butler, right? Yeah, mm. so bad, but I can't. Uh, Mike Butler, I uh, wanted to make sure you guys were aware that today is Dean Mitchell, a.k.a. Dino UK's birthday. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, brother. Dino. My question is, with Lana's upcoming baby, first baby face turn, is she going to be actually competing as a diva or just oh. a manager? Already talked about that. We're not really sure. I mean, I would see they're trying to get her to wrestle, but... I don't know her background. Like, does she need to start from scratch, or do they just need to make her better, or what? Right, I know right. Eva Marie's supposedly taking training super fucking serious, but... She's doing great with Brian Kendrick. What they uh, say, but some she of the videos so far gone to me that I can't see her ever having a good match. Tell you what, some of the videos she's put up on Instagram... She seems... Yeah. Well, yeah no. She seems like the kind of girl who's so, so preoccupied with her yeah, look yeah and her i'm a hot chick and what else uh, what, are, what other opportunities do i have this magazine want this tv show like i think she's like a stacy keebler she's using wwe to get somewhere or a sable would be a good like, i'm gonna she's get, not like i love wrestling i want to be here she's like oh i could be on tv because hot chicks and wrestling they just need a hot chick and i'm hotter than any chick that's gonna fucking i'm gonna win. give her the benefit of the doubt and say that almost every day she puts something up on Instagram, and she puts videos up, and I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt and say that she is training hard, right. trying That's to make That's the word it. going around. I just can't ever picture it. Right. I'm, I'm Listen, say, some people can train day and night their whole and life and take it serious as shit, I know. and they just don't got it. I know. She seems know. to me like somebody, no matter how hard she works, she's just going to be eh, at best. The fact that she's trying, That's she, huge. She's, she earns my respect Mine with, too. with that. So. And it makes her that much hotter too, like a, a hot chick that yeah. could have everything handed to her. And she's yeah. like, "No, I want to, I want to, I want to learn. I yeah, wanna I want to make it good." Right? Who we are? Uh, right here at the top. David Hadley. Thoughts on GFW Global Force Wrestling announcing talent tomorrow, and why are tickets to their second show on sale before tickets to their first show? I didn't. Even I didn't know, know about the, the second show before the first show, but there's a big press conference tomorrow in Las Vegas, yeah. Nevada. Uh, they are going to announce the the roster. Not and, the, I don't um, the whole roster. They're going to announce some talent signings, right? Uh, so is it the they whole sent a graphic out that said the GFW roster reveal on the top. So yeah, that's a nice phrase to use. But yeah. Are they going to announce like a nice long roster? Or they're going to they... announce at least some names okay. tomorrow. So we don't know if it's the entire roster. What time roster. is this during the afternoon, morning? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Las Vegas is three hour difference. Yeah. So, so... Alright, even if it's in the morning there, we got something to do. not sure the exact right, time, but there good. is a press conference tomorrow. Jay Mullen, uh, uh, Thought Raw... That bullshit. Yeah. That company's not going anywhere. It's I don't want to waste my time. <laughs> Jay Mullen, Thought Raw last night was pretty good. Who do you see walking out as champion in the Fatal 4-Way at Payback PS? There's something about the New Day that I dig. I think it's the chant with the New Day. New Day? I think it's one of those where it's getting so dumb yeah. and so cheesy that it's starting to become something that you find either funny or interesting. Like, it's so that side that you're like, <laughs> these fucking idiots. <laughs> <laughs> these idiots, right? Yeah. Uh, and as then, far as um, who retains Rollins, or uh, who wins Rollins. I'm going to say, I'm gonna say yeah. Rollins. I mean, Triple H cut a promo, I think it was in Albany, or, or maybe the week after, where he basically said that, you know, tough enough is coming around. Look at a guy like Seth Rollins. This guy made it. I think they are very, very high on Seth Rollins right now, and there are yeah. no, they absolutely are. There are no plans to take the title off him. That that yeah yeah they're not gonna take it off him already not not yet I think the next time it'll be Brock at SummerSlam and that would be the first a big big hyped up match yeah, right if, if he might lose that one because I don't Seth, see Brock losing again Seth Rollins is hanging on to that title for at least the next couple of months in 
My this opinion. is a great question, and I don't really know the answer to this. So I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let you answer, but I'll ask it. Lance Winter, Mr. Winter's Lair. I don't know either. What is up with Bubba Ray Dudley, Mr. Bully Ray? We haven't seen him since the Royal Rumble. You know what's interesting? Bubba Ray came out in an interview and said that Shortly he would after, love yeah. he would love to return to WWE full time. He said he was talking to him about it. He said he was talking to him. So yeah. you would think that nothing else he would be the new Bill DeMott. Uh, NXT trainer. He would be the new Bill DeMott. Somebody, He's a hard ass. Right. You know. You know. Right. But other than that, we I mean, Royal Rumble was a one-and-off deal, and you would think that, like Boone said, have him be down there so in NXT. stupid to make it a one-and-off. The way, especially the, like, the way they react. To I know. I, mean. I know. Uh, Tom Nelson, do you guys watch Lucha Underground? I have not have caught it. Have you ever it. seen an episode? I have never I have. seen an episode, but I heard that it's awesome. It is very different. Really? I don't know if you would think it's awesome. I heard they've got a guy, like, in a press box above the ring, and he's, like, the commissioner. I've only seen one episode, and, and the one I saw, it was, what stood out to me was the backstage vignettes, the video, the, the, uh, the, the bit, the, back, the promo segments backstage. Mm-hmm. It is shot like a scene of a movie. It's very... Really? I mean, it's like a fucking scene from a movie. Like, you would say that, and, and, and I remember people telling me that before I saw it. And right. my boss made me watch it once to get a bonus one week. Right. So I would, you know, hey, money, I'll watch it. You pay me to watch a TV show, you got it, man. And it wasn't a huge, but I'm like, all right. But it, was it good? It was very different. Would I watch it every week? No. If they had a, if, if they had WWE's, even if they had TNA's roster, and they were shooting it the way they shoot TV, right. I would love it. I think I would like it. Because a bunch of Mexicans in masks, See, I don't know. I, think, I can't get into it. I think I would like it because I love the high-flying The stuff. wrestling? Yeah. You would... <laughs> really? It's you good. would love it, bro. Really? Oh, my God. Right. Fucking right. forget about it. No doubt. Yeah. Uh, Steven Gravaic is up next. And he says, What other WWE shows have you guys gone to in the past? P.S. Happy birthday to Dino UK, Mr. Dean Mitchell. Uh, I I like I've been I, to Nitro. I've been to Nitro. I've been to SmackDown with you. I've been to Nitro with my stepdad. Nitro, uh, SmackDown with you. Uh, I had never been to a WWE pay per view. I went to an NWA pay per view when I was a little kid with my mm-hmm. gray my what would he be called? My grandmother's second husband. So like my step grandfather. All right. Pretty much daddy number one that died. Right. He would take me to wrestling and shit. I've been. I went to an NWA show and then I went to a Nitro with Tim. Right. Daddy number three or something like that. He's in there. Somewhere. Right, right. I went to SmackDown with you. Right. Up here. Yeah. I went to an ECW yeah. with you up here. I've and then been, I've been to a bunch of house shows. Never know WWE pay per views, never know Raw. I've been to ECW, Ring of Honor. The original Raw. ECW or the. Uh, uh, the the original, original ECW in Schenectady. Yeah, I never remember that. When Scott Hall returned to ECW. Oh, that's right. Ready or not? Here I come. You so, I've been to ECW, oh. I've been to Ring of Honor, I've been to Raw, I've been to SmackDown, and I've been to Hell in the Cell. Alright, and you've been to a bunch of Raws. A bunch of Raws and a bunch of SmackDown. Beer truck. And I'm about to SmackDown, Heyman throwing the hat. Screw you! Heyman and Vince McMahon in the Shooting, ring. Yeah. Uh, I had that shoot promo. I've been to the beer truck. Steve Austin driving a beer truck into the arena. Been to numerous no. Raws, numerous SmackDowns. Another milestone because I showed you on the, the Mr. McMahon. And I'm McMahon. going to my first NXT live event in a week from now. What was the Mr. McMahon documentary? Remember, I even took pictures of you in the crowd. I'm in the so front row. What? That row. wasn't the beer truck or the Heyman thing. That was another it was mile- the Heyman thing. No, it was a different milestone, like another, like another famous Raw that you were at. It was another big, like something big that everybody knows. They crashed a car out back. There. there was a car out back, and they crashed it into a rock wall. In the back, it might have been that one. Maybe, I don't know. It was another really big one. So I was like, wow, you were there for that too, you son of a bitch. David Hadley. David Hadley says, next week is a big week in wrestling with Payback and the Ring of Honor New Japan Pro Wrestling shows. I know you'll watch Payback, but are you going to give the Friday Night Global Wars internet pay-per-view a go? I watch all the Ring of Honor I pay-per-views whenever they're on. Uh, I've got a stream that broadcasts ROH. You know that I watch ROH. Oh, I thought you were asking me. I'm not going to watch any of that garbage. I watch uh, it, and uh, I'll talk about it next week, uh, if it's on this weekend. I believe it is. Uh, Jay Mulgan. Jay Mulgan. Jay Mullen says, Boone, thoughts on the John Jones Ooh. situation? And he says, does Alistair Overstream <laughs> and Junior Dos Santos happen? And Man, he asks it every week. And picks for Daniel Cormier, Anthony Rumble Johnson, and Jose Aldo Conor McGregor. I am going to let you go on a rant here, and right. I'll get ready for the next question. Thoughts on John Jones' situation is way too in-depth to get into. I think he fucked up. He's paying the price, and I don't care what happens to him. What I cut think? him off right yeah, here. Go ahead. Congratulations 
Well, you don't for being one of the first websites. Yeah, but it's a tragic, kind out. of a tragic. It's like a pregnant woman it, got it, it is, it is, good, good but job. Uh, listen, yeah. what John Jones did, it's fucked up, it's man. It's disgusting. But he ran from. You were on top of that. He ran. Realized he forgot a bunch of money, so he ran back to his car, grabbed a bunch of fucking cash, stuffed his pockets, ran away again, not knowing that an undercover cop who was a UFC fan, because they're in Albuquerque, which is like the capital of MMA as far as like training. You know, and upbringing. Yeah. Yeah. So the the guy recognized him. It was John Jones. But anyways, that to get into that story would take forever. Uh, He's been stripped of the title. He's no longer ranked by the UFC in the 205 class or the pound for pound class. Nope. He lost his Reebok sponsorship, which was a multi million. It was a big deal. And he still got all the court legal shit to go through. He's no longer the champ. So now it'll be Anthony Johnson versus Daniel Cormier. Rumble. Anthony Rumble Johnson versus DC as the new main event of 187, May 23rd on pay per view. Co main event is Chris Weidman versus Vitor Belfort. Cormier or Johnson? Cormier? Cormier. All right. But uh, I personally think the real main event should be Chris Weidman, Vitor Belfort. That's a bigger fight than Cormier. It's a huge fight. What did I say? Johnson. Anthony Rumble. Vitor Belfort and Chris Weidman. Right. I think it's a much bigger fight than Cormier and Rumble. I do too. But, uh, anyways, that's the double headliner right there. Uh, his other question does. Junior Dos Santos Alistar Overstream happen? I'm gonna say yes, but I know Overstream's ducking him. And then the last Junior one, Dos Santos came out today and said that he thinks Overeem is more talk than he is a fighter. Well, he ducked him in the past. There's All no right. doubt in that. So now right. it's like, but I think I think Overeem will take it now. All Don't right. ask me why. It's hard to explain. Uh, picks for DC Rumble and Aldo McGregor. I will go DC over Rumble. Oh God, Aldo, Aldo McGregor. It's a You're a McGregor mark. I know. You're a McGregor mark. I mean, I'll take Aldo just so I can bet you. No, Let's bet. That, that's where Come you're on. not going to get it at. I, my explanation was going to be I do not want to bet against Conor McGregor. I am pre- I have never wanted somebody to win so bad since Chael Sonnen versus Anderson Silva or since Rampage versus Vandalay in UFC after he'd already been knocked out twice in But Friday. because he's fighting Aldo. But because he's fighting Aldo... And he hasn't been tested at that level. Who who you take? I'll take the opposite. I gotta wait till close. It's not even till July. Right. I gotta right. wait till close. We'll but uh, we'll wait. right now, Aldo, David but Hadley. I pray I'm wrong. I've never prayed I was wrong more than right that on, on that one. David Hadley, fill in the blank. New day rocks. Rocks. So. I was. <laughs> it's. Sucks, dude. Because I, I was gonna. I, I was gonna. All right, Vincent Nugent. Did you guys get? Did you guys? Did you guys got? Did you guys Just got the chance to watch the Chris Jericho live interview on the WWE Network with Stephanie McMahon last Thursday night after SmackDown? Sometimes so we bots make mistakes too. No, no, no. I was trying to uh, make sure I didn't read it wrong. If I kept going, would it make sense? I was saying. <laughs> I was trying to understand it. As Sometimes. I Bots. Yeah, I get it. Asian Make bot. Mistakes. Anyways, what, did we watch it? Yes, we watched yeah. it. Yes, we did. Uh, our it thoughts was, on it, we already uh, gave it to us. It was very phony and scripted and seemed, you know, bullshit. Very scripted. David Hadley back again. How the fuck the goddamn Bella Horse turned fucking babyface all of a goddamn sudden? <laughs> How the fuck did them oh, guys... Let tell you something about them Bella twins. How the fuck did them goddamn Bella whores turn fucking baby face all of a goddamn sudden? I couldn't tell you that. After the God. 10, goddamn. 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 I don't... Uh, what? How the fuck? Uh, because somebody wrote it on a paper and said, here's your because job tonight. Because it was part of the script, yeah. man. Uh, Anthony Arkbuckle. I like that last name. Arbuckle. Arbuckle. Yeah. Arbuckle. Or buckle your ass on out of here. Anthony Andrew or buckle. I think Fandango should drop the dance gimmick and do a Michael's esque sexy boy gimmick. Just bang chicks and throw kicks. You feel me? The longest time there was Bang chicks and throw kicks. I dig the longest it. time was a question if Michaels was banging chicks, but that's another story. They they thought him and Vince were gay together. Hey banging them bell twin chicks. <laughs> you bang you getting them bell twins. <laughs> Vincent Nugent said you like to make fun of country people, huh? Oh, I love it. I was born in West Virginia. I'm really? not born there, but I, yeah, you I, got the accent, I lived huh? there for a few years. I did yeah, for a while when I was a kid. You got the New York accent now. I got a little bit of it adopted, yeah. I'm from Baltimore, where all this crazy shit's I know, going. all that yeah. crazy stuff, man. Vincent Newton says, how do, you guys, how do you guys think King Wade Bad News Barrett will do in his King of Bad News gimmick since he won the 2015 King of the Ring? Well, wow, that was hard to read. Uh, how do I think he'll do? He'll do, he'll do all right. I don't know. 
Uh, yeah. I, got I mean, some royal bad news. King for Barrett I have no idea. started last night with uh, with that whole gimmick. We got uh, Jason Hansen. I can see what you're saying about Ryback, but the whole feed me more thing is over with the fans. It is, man. I'm not. I'm yeah, not denying that, man. It is over with the fans. Which makes me sad for fans of wrestling these days. That that's I, over. I know. Yeah. I uh, I don't see that going anywhere. However, did you watch him on the Jericho podcast? It was an awesome podcast. I've uh, seen the Ryback Jericho not podcast. Watch. Yeah, he was on his regular talk as Jericho show, not live with Chris Jericho. All right, uh, Acer's up next. Vince Thank Nugent God, and Ryan. I think right. they turned Ryback when they pushed him a bit too soon when he first debuted in the WWE main roster. Do you guys think Ryback should have been pushed as a babyface monster, plowing through opponents? It would have worked, in my opinion. I agree, man. I think Ryback is a babyface. Um, I agree with that, man. Ryback as a babyface, I think, could get over more than be than you know being a heel. I think last night on Raw. Ryback was a baby face. You know, I mean, Ryback's kind of baby face these days, man, especially with that promo last night. So, uh, David Hadley. Wouldn't that idea next? turn Rusev baby face? I wouldn't pay attention because I am stuck on this next one here addressed to me. I think he's referring to a comment that was asked above. Somebody submitted a comment and he's replying no, with I'm that idea. The next one down has got me all freaked out. Oh, Wesley Goodman, Matt Boone likes black girls. And do you say the N word when no one is around? It's okay if you do. Triple smiley face. Where the hell did that come from? We don't. And no. And uh, do I like black girls? Yeah. I mean, I like any girl that's pretty. But yeah. Any girl that's pretty. We were just drooling all over that chick the other day uh, with the orange hair. It's kind of mulatto. Mulatto. I told you that's a bad word. Well, I, I tried telling right. you, man. All right. You right. got to say biracial. Biracial. Uh, Jason Hansen, anytime Boone starts discussing something or talks you of Steve Clark starts looking at time or cuts him off, what's going on? He's right. Anytime it's something he doesn't want to talk about, it's like, dude, we're in a rush. But if he wants to talk about it, it's Boone. Quit interrupting me. Vincent Nugent. <laughs> Uh, how do you think TNA handles the TNA Tag Team Champion situation with Jeff Hardy broke his leg? Uh, boy, uh, Acer, are you drunk tonight, man? Yeah, I know. What is you, up? With him? What's up? Normally, he's know. so he's like all the spelling is very professional. Yeah. Very professional, and, and up. tonight he's maybe he's his a bot's off. a little off. I don't know. Uh, Did you Jeff see Hardy, the video of the Jeff Hardy thing? The accident? Yes, yeah, it was nasty. Crazy. He hit that jump and came down, and when the bike came down, it hit the top of the uh, the yeah. other jump. And uh, bad. it looks like he's going to be out for a couple of months. So you would think he just made an appearance this Saturday. In, uh, in he made an appearance, but he didn't wrestle. No, 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 and no, he's, no, no, no. He's tag team champion in TNA. Yeah, yeah, so Matt, right. you would think at the TV oh. tapings, you've got a live impact coming up this Friday, and then following the live impact, are they the current champs? Current, as far as how far up to were taped, or as far as they're what's they're, aired, they're taped all the way up to this week. Come Friday. They taped past this week. No, no, they haven't. Come Friday. Oh, we're just about to start taping. They taped all this shit January. Way back. Yeah. Come Friday, okay. they're doing a live impact. TNA Impact. This so Friday. the last taping that ever happened, they were still the tag champions. So he's Correct. currently one half of the team. He's currently gotcha. one half. Okay. So come this Friday, they're doing a live TNA Impact. It's oh, they're doing it live. Live. Are they taping shit before and after? It's on Destination America. It's live this Friday. After the TV tapings, they tape they're going to tape okay. a couple of weeks in advance. So, so the tapings don't even start. What time does TNA start? Eight. It's going to be about eight o'clock. So All they've right. got. So Friday they don't even Saturday. start the tapings till ten Eastern. Eight o'clock Eastern. You said TNA Impact airs from eight to ten Eastern, and it's live, and it's live. So eight to ten's live. They start taping shit so after. They would tape, you said. They would tape after. Yeah, and so then they're on not Saturday. starting their taping until Saturday. ten p.m. And then on Saturday. There's more tapings on Yeah, no, I know they break them up, but you're telling me after the live impact ends on Thursday, whatever it is, they're going to tape an episode afterwards. So that taping doesn't even start till 10. It takes about an hour. And then they the stop the night, breaks. they come back the next night, tape a bunch of Correct. weeks at Correct. normal times. But that's, that's my thing. Correct. So if you're there from 8 to 10 for the live one, it'll sound good on TV, but the crowd who tunes in next week will have just started cheering at 10 p.m., so they might sound like shit on With TV. post-production like and it, everything yeah, else. Yeah, but the crowd will look like shit when they hear the big noise. Right. You hear a big pop, and there'll be people sitting there like this. Moral moral of the story. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. The crowd, <laughs> like, like you'll hear, you hear yeah! and the crowd will be, be like, <laughs> the crowd's supposed to be. You hear people going, oh. we'll see what happens on, uh, 
We'll see what happens on uh, on Friday. Jacob, somebody left Jacob by himself. We'll see what happens on Friday. Is what Mr. Ryan Clark was saying. Uh oh. Look at this guy with a nice oh, haircut. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah! Oh, hold, on, hold on, we don't got time for this. Get your nephew the hell out of here. Oh yeah! Oh, oh, you're gonna point to the go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> We'll see what happens on. Uh, Come on, Army, that was a good one. That was good. Right kicks my knee, it kicks my nephew out of here, man. Yeah, no. All right, uh, Come on. All right, we got David Adley. I think you guys should shorten up the raw review. Every I was trying to, man. But Boom got mad at me. Yeah, he was trying uh, to when I was talking. Be able, to get, talking, <laughs> be was, able to get more news and more time for <laughs> phone calls and rapid fire. I agree, man. We're going to try to shorten raw. We really do. Because everybody right. watches raw, you know? I agree. I don't even know why we bring it up. <laughs> I don't either. And then uh, David Hadley with the last one. If something happened during raw that needs talking, put in the rapid fire. David yeah. Hadley says, do you guys think Lana ends up on Total Divas? Uh, it would be smart to do that. I think so. Especially with the baby face. Depending on her personality. Because if they want to make her a baby face and she's like a stuck up B word. Yeah. Then it would be bad to put on. Because then there's no way to turn her baby face. Right. You know? I mean, I guess there is, but. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't help any matters. That's Tuesday night, brother. WWE Smackdown. Everybody being talking taped. about. Look they're, look, they're talking about you, Jake. He is. Stand he up. Is, he is. In your diapers. He's in his diapers. Rick tonight. Flair, child. Oh, give him a Rick Flair. Rick Flair. Give him a little child. harder than that. He can take it. Rick hey! Flair, hey. You hear that slap? You hear that slap? He's look a it. tough guy. Oh! Oh! <laughs> He's a tough guy, man. This guy. The champ is here. Jacob, tell him where they can submit is here. Uh, feedback. Where can they submit that feedback? Where can they submit feedback, Jake? This guy, I will tell you. On the computer. <laughs> On the computer. On the computer. On the computer. He ain't got to talk. <laughs> this guy, all he wants to do is wrestle, wrestle, wrestle. He's always about fighting, right? Champ is here. Champ is here. Uh, he just, he wants <clears> to <throat> fight. And you can, uh, I'll tell you what. Yeah, and you can vouch for this. He's I beat him up pretty good. Bee, yeah. I beat him up pretty good, man. We'll slap him around a little bit. <laughs> you should reword that. I mean, you, know? you don't beat him up. We beat him up You're pretty on good. A, a camera right now, and man. He, uh, you don't he, beat up your two-year-old nephew. You wrestle. He wrestles. He yeah. wrestles. Yeah. But we wrestle, and uh, he knows all the guys now. It's like John Cena. So and a name all, he can't even, name. Even the yeah. even the the mid card guys. He he. He gets He'll surprise them. you. Cesaro and and, and Stardust, Stardust and Goldust yeah. and, and Dean Hope. Ambrose, all these guys, man. And and now he's getting to the point where when the entrance music hits, yep, he knows the entrance music. I, yeah, the other day that like one note of a song hit, and he immediately did <laughs> Rusev. Yeah, like, like, he yeah. knew immediately. Who he was. knows. Yeah. He knows. So, anyways, we're gonna get out of here. We're gonna take down the uh, set. Jacob always helps us. He takes down the set. He had fun of Raw the other night. He, he did. Had he had a great time. We saw John Cena at Monday Night Raw. So we're going to take down the set. We'll leave it up for you guys uh, while well, we take it down. We always do. J this is where Jacob will start talking. He sees his face up on the, uh, yeah, on the screen shy. right now. So he's a little bit shy. He's tired. But uh, we'll leave it up. We're out of here. We will see you guys next Tuesday night, 8 to 10 Eastern Time. WZRonline.com. We want your feedback as well. I know we had some tough competition tonight with the ESPN WWE NXT special, but send us your feedback. How can they submit feedback, Matty Boom? It's pretty simple. You go to Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark to send feedback to Mr. Ryan Clark. Let him know what you liked. He'll do more of it. Let him know what you didn't like. He'll do less of it. Facebook.com slash Ryan Clark WZR. Let me know what you thought of the show. You go to Facebook.com slash Matt Boone WZR. I said it's Facebook.com slash Matt Boone WZR. Let me know what you like. I'll do more of it. Let me know what you didn't like. I'll do less of it. This is how we make the show exactly what you want to hear. Blah, 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 blah. Tell him, Jake. <laughs> Facebook.com slash yeah. Ryan Clark WZR. Facebook.com slash Matt Boone WZR. We're out of here. We'll see you next Tuesday night, 8 10 Eastern Time. WZRonline.com for Matt Boone, That's me. Jacob Ryan, That's this little guy. and me, Ryan That's Clark. Right there. We'll see you next Tuesday night, 8 10 Eastern Time. WZRonline.com. That's <laughs> 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 <laughs>